Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Hampstead School Board meeting of Tuesday, September 8th, 2020. Um, before we begin, I will read our statement for remote meetings. As chair of the Hampstead School Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are a, providing public access to the meeting by telephone. We are utilizing Zoom for this electronic meeting. All members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform, and the public has access to contemporaneously listen to this meeting by dialing the following phone number, 888-475-4499 or 877-853-5257. B, providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting, including how to access the meeting using Zoom telephonetically. Instructions have also been provided on the district website at hampsteadschools.net. C, providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem, please email hmstechnology at hampsteadschools.net. D, adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Melissa, will you please take a roll call mm -hmm. attendance? Megan Malcolm. Uh, I'm here, I'm alone in this room. However, there's other members in this house. Caitlin Parnell. Here, I'm alone in the room. There are other members of my family in the house. David Smith. You're muted. I'm on mute. Uh, I am here alone in the room and others are in the house. Thank you. Jim Sweeney. Here, alone in the room, other members in the house. Karen Yusenka. I'm here in my office. There are other members in the house. And executive consultant, Dr. Earl Metzler. Good evening. I'm here in my home office, and there are other members of my family in the house. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Board members, in your packet, we have three sets of meeting minutes. We have the August 26th public forum part two, the regular meeting of August 26th, and then the non-public session of August 26th. If you can please take a moment to review. Um, if you have any questions or comments, we can discuss, and otherwise I'll have a motion. However, if you would like to present them, we can do them separately or together. Make the most when easy. you're ready, if I, oh, thanks, David. Yeah. Uh, you want to do all three? Sorry, I'll let yeah. you say your motion. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, please go. Um, uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes uh, from August 26th public forum part two, the regular meeting, and the non-public session. We have second. A second. Second. Thank you, Jim. Um, I have a question. I don't yes. really see any non-public minutes. Mm -hmm. 
Madam Chair, would you like me to address that question? Yep. Yep. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Um, Mrs. Yasenka, the non-public minutes are sent to the secure folder that the board members have access to. Oh, okay. Thanks. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. This is the one benefit to Zoom. We can quickly look things up on our computers when we need to. Um, Karen, do you, do you need a minute or do you want to, oh, okay. um, I've got it. You're good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Melissa, will you please, um, call the roll vote? Sure. Mrs. Malcolm? Yes. Mrs. Purnell? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. Mrs. Jasenka? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, moving on to current business. Um, first up is principals and directors update on the 2020-2021 school year. I believe Mr. Flynn, you are going to bring us through this or start us off. Uh, yep, yeah. thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, so we, because of all the amount of work that's been going on um, we decided to do a combined report. Uh, so typically you would hear from principals and myself, um, but with all that is happening and is going to continue to happen prior to next Monday, uh, we felt it was better to do a combined report, um, which you're gonna see here. Dr. Metzer, did you have anything to mention before we move forward? No, I think uh, you know the most important piece here is uh, again, to emphasize how, how cooperative um, you know, the community has been you know, this is a, a extremely challenging situation. The administrators have, have done a nice job. The staff has done a great job. Um, as you know, we're, we're seeing things pop up all over, Raymond and Wyndham and, and different places with COVID. So I think, um, you know, this opening plan, I think, is, is solid. And, and uh, we're, we're really, um, we're excited. And we can't wait to get started next, next Monday. We're opening up with our parade. But um, again, just want to thank everybody for um, understanding there are challenges. I know this doesn't, isn't great for everybody, but... Uh, I think it's the safest, most efficient and effective way uh, for us to start the year and, uh, and, then, and then work uh, forward in terms of that ultimate goal of getting everybody in person uh, as soon as possible. So thanks, Mike. Yep. Okay, so um, I promoted all the principals, so they should be able to open their mics and get started. Mr. Collins. Good evening. Um, just wanted to uh, start off with uh, a little bit about the enrollment. Uh, you can see that our numbers in first grade, second grade, third grade, and fourth grade are August numbers and always August numbers. The beginning of the school year are relatively smaller than that it will end up being. Uh, we put asterisk next to the preschool and the kindergarten because preschool is actually starting in a smaller way, which I'll be addressing in a couple of moments. And uh, kindergarten Earlier this summer, we had many more students registered than are actually gonna start the school year. There's a significant number of kindergarten families that have gone other directions instead of having their children to our school. On my last count, it was at least a dozen, if not more. In fact, there were so many students, we actually ran a lottery this summer for placements in full day K and even AMK for the first time. Uh, some of the things that we're planning, everybody knows at Central School every year, we like to have a read with a hero, which is we invite in a bunch of heroes coming to our school. And we're not gonna let that opportunity pass because we've done this every single year on September 11th. This is in honor of all the tragedies of 2001 on September 11th. So this year uh, we worked with Officer Conway and he's working with some of our other community heroes to develop some stuff that we can share with the families later this week if they'd like to hear one of the heroes sharing a story. As we all know, school is starting next Monday the 14th. Central School Parade is gonna be in the morning at 11 a.m. And part of that parade is a lot of the students will have come to the school already to pick up some things either on Friday or that morning. But the parade will be that fun thing, very similar to what we did last year. Uh, for those that are watching, the parade will actually start at the top of the hill across from the old meeting house and then we'll just have all of our st staff roped around the school and then they'll exit down at the foot of the hill by the uh, main entrance to the school. Um, 
preschool classroom teachers have actually put in a request. I've talked to Mr. Flynn and um, Francine Flynn as well about our preschool program. Uh, we originally announced that the preschool program was going to hold off on having any virtual programming for our preschool students other than the mandated special education uh, programming. So our preschool classroom teachers are actually going to start reaching out to their students sometime next week and start doing little small one on one virtual sessions so they can meet all of the little three and four year olds that will eventually start coming to their school. They just want to do more of a meet and greet and then hopefully uh, get to know the, the littlest ones that will be in our school whenever we reach that point that we can start bringing all of our children onto school. Central School is doing a virtual opening house, as is the middle school. Uh, we are going to actually start them tomorrow evening. Fourth grade and then third grade will have their open houses. Now, the Central School open houses for grades one, two, three, and four are 30 minute sessions, and the teachers will be sending a Google, I'm sorry, a Zoom link to the families so they can log in so parents and students can actually meet their teacher. We prepared some stuff in advance uh, so they can meet their music teacher, their art teacher with some videos and things of that nature so they can see some of the other teachers in the school. And uh, the, the sessions will be no more than 30 minutes. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a little bit shorter. It's more of a presentation mode. Uh, it's not going to be a, a highly interactive piece because it's just too many variables. Uh, so families will get a chance to meet their child's classroom teacher fourth grade and third grade tomorrow evening. And then on Thursday evening, we do, we're doing it five o'clock, six o'clock, and then seven o'clock. We strategically tried to move this around some of the times and dates at the middle school, just to make it more family convenient. I will say the kindergarten presentation will be different. It's gonna be mostly the principals and the school counselor presenting our kindergarten program with a little bit of um, input from our kindergarten team. This is typically what would happen every March as we prepare families to get things going. Next screen, please. Uh, we wanted to sort of give you an, some sort of um, an overview of what has actually developed with our work with the teachers over the last couple of weeks. And this was communicated last Friday with a lot of our families in much more greater detail than I'm sharing right here. But basically, we are, we are looking at two sides of learning that are going to be happening during the virtual learning. One of them is the core subject learning, which has a combination of classroom meeting time, which will be on the Zoom platform, as well as um, some of the flipped classroom pieces. Some people use the term asynchronous to work with them. So with our youngest students, we really want to start slow. We want to have the students meeting with the teachers. We're going to try to get it started with five days a week. And I think our youngest ones in kindergarten will probably be meeting in a group of two or three at the most. And then as we get more comfortable with this platform, we'll continue to grow the groups. So hopefully we'll eventually get them going together as a whole group. Uh, the other part of this, uh, we're gonna be roping into that morning meeting with all of our classrooms at the central school. So every single classroom at school will have five days a week, but it's gonna vary. So kindergarten starts just, to, just a few kids, our older students in say third or fourth grade We'll be right in it next Tuesday. And that morning meeting is a chance for the whole class to get together and it just in kindergarten, they're going to continue right through a literacy piece. Math will be added three or four weeks, probably later into this thing. Who knows? That's we're looking at hopefully in early October. Um, and then one of the things I want to emphasize is the children will have a lot of personal touch with their teacher in kindergarten for their first couple of weeks and then we'll start grouping them. Grade one is actually gonna start off again, five days a week with that class meeting, which will be followed almost immediately with the literacy piece. And four days a week, they'll also have math. Now our older students in second, third and fourth grade are gonna have five days a week of that class meeting, followed by literacy and math on four days a week. And on their fifth day will be a science and social studies day. Uh, we do have art, music, PE, social emotional learning with our school counselor and FLESS built into our programming. And we've actually designed it in a way that it's sort of a two-sided program. As an example, if the children want to watch Mr. Torelli demonstrate an art technique, there'll be a video that they can watch where he'll teach them a lesson and they can continue with that working at home. And then once a week, Mr. Torelli will actually meet with the whole class so they can 
share their work just like you would see in a typical art class. You'll see that same thing in music, physical education. Now social emotional learning is our opportunity for our school counselor to meet with every single classroom across the school. She'll be using things such as a second step program, which is a great social emotional support program, as well as some of the other classes that a school counselor would do throughout the year. For example, October is a fire safety month, so she'll probably a week she'll be working on stuff along that line. And I think the board's fully aware that this is our second year with the FLESS program. And that will start again, since it's young children, KN1, it'll start small with some videos and then growing into classes. And we're actually hoping to get that up to two classes per classroom per week. Uh, the biggest piece at the Hampstead Central School is what we are framing as what I need. I can't emphasize this enough that we are trying to personalize the virtual learning as much as we can to the individual needs of children. So if you were able to see the graphic of what our schedule looked like, you'd all be like boggling because there's so many layers to it. You'll see a significant amount of time called what I need and when. Now, basically what we want to emphasize is and in when interventions, uh, that would be one of the blocks of time that happens right after math and right after their literacy block. That's typically happens in our school every day. The children start with a reading lesson and then they can continue working on reading. And during that intervention, the wind intervention block, that's when a special education teacher or reading specialist or the classroom teacher continues with that literacy lesson. Same thing on the math side. And we're trying to put that concept into our um, virtual learning training piece. There's also another part of when, that's when there are times that are not tied to a math or a literacy block, but it's around the day. That's when a special education teacher, a Title I teacher, a remediation or ventures teacher can take a child and work with a child or a small group. And the teachers know the groupings that they're going to start off with and that will grow. And then we also are saying that when is what typically happens in a school every day, which means they have a lesson and a child needs to sit and complete their work. So everybody knows at the central school that our day is gonna be from nine to three. So the children will see their, uh, they'll see their literacy lesson, their math lesson, their social studies lesson, their unified arts lesson. They will also have their specialty programs and built in through the win. And they'll have times that the classroom teacher could just sit and talk to a child alone or a couple of kids and say, how's it going? What can we do? Uh, the child could even hook into our school technology integration teacher, Mrs. Craig, to actually get some tutoring on how to use all of these online tools. And the last thing, especially at the elementary level, we're going to ask parents to help us monitor this. The teacher can do it at school, but we need the parents at home is to make sure that these children have time to be a child, which is play, have a snack, have a lunch. We built a time in for lunch, but we didn't build in a time for play and snack. And you know, the teachers will try to manage that as best they can. But we asking parents to work with us on this one so we can make sure that when they get away from the screen, they do have a chance to go out in the middle of the day. Keep in mind in an elementary school, if you're a first grader, you get two recesses a day. So we want the children to have those breaks during the day. Snack time is critical, and of course, parents are naturally inclined to do this, but we're going to encourage that as well. This is a, an important part of WIN because that's what little ones need. They need time to play. I'm going to hand it over to Mrs. Danola. Good evening, everyone. Nice to see you. Uh, we had a very busy day with our students and teachers, and I'm going to give you a, a, a snapshot of what is going on uh, this very, very busy week. Um, as you see on my first slide, you'll see we're at a total of 371 for our enrollment for this, uh, this year. Our schedule has remained the same since the last time I spoke with you with regards to classes remotely being offered 830 to 1230 um, to minimize screen time with work uh, in the afternoons, um, personally with, with uh, their teachers or in small groups um, and in other formats. Um, you can go to the next one, please. Okay, our virtual open houses. We started this evening with the fifth grade had their first open house. It was very well attended. Uh, kids were there um, seeing our baby hawks. Oh my gosh, talk about a tug on your heart. 
um, but they energize us and the team afterwards uh, was, we're very excited to just see the faces and seeing how we're gonna involve them in everything we do in this uh, phase one of remote learning. So the, kudos to the fifth grade team. We had a little um, learning moment there that is uh, gonna help be helpful to the other teams as we go forward. Um, parents asked some really good, good questions, um, specific pieces because they're new to our school. Um, so we have uh, lots of support for our, our, our new Hawks um, coming down the road every single day. Um, so that went extremely well. Um, moving on, um, just to let you know, during the open house, they talked about all the technology platforms that we are using, try to make it very concise, along with other supports. Um, and all the, the who, what, where, when, why, and how stuff. Um, I've been sending out notices to parents. Um, some people said, great, you're giving me um, just enough information. Some are saying you're giving me too much information. And um, so we're trying to find a, a modicum of, uh, of uh, levels so we're not over, overdoing it and giving people too many emails to sift through. So um, uh, communication is top. So I'd rather be too much than not enough. Um, so our upcoming events, as you can see today, um, we uh, dispersed a parent technology instructional video that was posted by Mr. Pimentel and it was for um, parents knowing, um, even if they already know how to access some of these tools, a nice refresher. Um, we are uh, going to do another follow-up on Thursday night. That's gonna be a live session of the uh, video we put out today of a live question and answer with Mr. Pimentel and parents and administrators on how best to use these tools, what are the best settings to use that you're notified either daily or weekly or monthly with regards to your student's progress. Um, your children's progress. And we also had during primary uh, election voting today at the school, we also had uh, tryouts for boys and girls soccer and field hockey. And unfortunately, we are unable to uh, obtain any coaches for cross country this season. Um, we tried, we, we put out uh, ads in, for two months and uh, we got to the, the um, tryout season and we weren't able to successfully uh, have any coaches step up for uh, cross country. And, uh, you know, parents have, have touched base with me about that and I've said, I said, geez, if there's an interest even in your neighborhood, if you could get some running programs going together and put the sneakers on and maybe put some prizes out there. But unfortunately, this season, if we don't have a coach, we don't have a, we don't have a season for that, that, that sport. Um, we are distributing um, distributing all of our student materials on Friday, and we are going to be um, we uh, Whole Foods gave us 400 of those double bags. Thank you very much um, in Bedford, um, and we will uh, all of our Chromebooks are ready to go. And some parents who, if they're unable to come on Friday, I've just asked them to call me, and we've we've been meeting them at the door with with their Chromebooks. All the other materials uh, may not be ready. Um, until Friday. So we'll make arrangements to get them these things. We're getting whiteboards that are double-sided whiteboards with markers and erasers for kids to be working on their math. And they can show it to their teacher immediately during the live sessions. Uh, we've got agenda books. We've got power school login information. We've got some science materials for some grades, social study materials for other grades. Um, so we um, are still getting uh, materials delivered each day. So we are trying to do a very holistic um, goodie bag of, of learning materials to make uh, their learning come alive. And we have our welcome back parade on Monday, September 14th. That's going to be our first day of school for students. It's going to be a soft start. We're going to have an extended advisory period from 830 to 1030. So students can can get to know their advisors and then a meet and greet with their um, their teachers and then um, we will have a soft landing on that day to um, allow for the hcs parade to go at 11 and then we will have our welcome back parade at one o'clock for the Hampstead middle school parade so we are 
we're busy, but it's 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 going well, and I'm open to any questions. Should you have some, or email me at this point. So thank you. Thank you. I will pick up from here. Um, we wanted to touch base to discuss all the work that our professionals have been doing over these past two weeks and including this week. It's important for everyone to be aware of how much our people are doing and how hardworking they are to want to do more. Um, I know that doesn't sound great, uh, but it, these past two weeks, it's, it's been a give me more, give me more, give me more type of attitude. Uh, so in the first week, it was important when we talk about personalized learning for students, it's also important for us to be personalized for our staff and our teachers. So beginning last week, uh, two weeks ago now, we solicited a lot of input back um, with the new professional development setup um, with those positions. Uh, we are really able to get uh, in, you know, we're, we're able to feel what they need a lot better than being told what they need to know. Um, so through that, uh, those discussions, um, we set up uh, virtual learning, obviously ourselves, but more importantly, uh, we thought it was important that uh, that first week we spent a lot of time around uh, the Zoom platform, Google Classroom, and Seesaw. So through these trainings, uh, we did the intricacies of how to do breakout rooms, how to communicate back and forth, how to set up small group instruction. Um, we talked on Google Classroom on how to post and, and assign and how to grade. Um, and then with Seesaw with our first and second graders, um, we really dove into posting videos. How will students be submitting their work? Um, and then took that opportunity to really reevaluate how we ended in the spring. Um, you know, through the crisis learning, uh, there were some holes and some gaps, and we wanted to take that time to make sure we, we analyzed uh, where we left off and where we need to pick up because it wasn't your typical end of year. So our staff uh, got together and, and looked at the curriculum along with the instruction and began to lesson plan. Um, for that first um, that first section, we, we've been calling it the chunks. Uh, we've been trying to target about 22 days um, and try and break it into pieces so that everyone feels comfortable as we're moving forward in the virtual learning. Uh, Mike, can I uh, jump in? Yeah, there? absolutely. Mm -hmm. so I, I think another really important piece. I think if you if you have watched other places um, not involved, the people in the trenches on the front end of the planning, um, it hasn't gone as well. You know, so I. I know I say this each time we get a chance to um, to, to uh, talk about this, but I think um, the advocacy of both Kara Gordon for HEA and Lisa Lambert for HASS has been um, extremely helpful because, you know, just like we ask students, you know, in their win period, what I need, you know, I'm basically I'm relying on, on those two groups to tell us what they need. And I think um, they haven't been shy. They've been, uh, you know, pretty, pretty straightforward about um, what they need. And I think, um, people's comfort level, I think, has um, has has increased or improved um, based on the information that um, it, you know it's give and take. So um, we're sharing both ways. You know, they're telling us what they need, and we're making sure they understand what we're doing. And I think uh, there's a there's a there's a comfort level that's um, it's much better now than it was three weeks ago. And I, I only think that will increase once we have an opportunity to to get in the buildings and really start school. I know the professional development piece has started, but um, once they start the level, their live teaching, so. Um, that has been a great piece. So that advocacy and, and uh, your support has been uh, tremendous. Um, getting this ready to to kick off uh, on that first uh, day on the 14th. So thanks, Mike. Absolutely. And, and speaking of that, so how we ended that first week was soliciting feedback um, to begin what we were going to do in the second week. And in the second week, you saw far more classroom preparation and practice. So if you can envision when we say classroom preparation and practice, it's no longer setting up your brick and mortar classroom. It's now taking the time to set up your virtual classroom. Class list, assignments, rosters. And then it was really important for us to practice. We had to practice to make sure that we became seamless in things that we're doing. Just like if we were in a classroom in brick and mortar transitioning from one assignment to the next, as a professional, it took time to practice and figure out what was best and how you got kids easily to transition from one to the next. So we practiced on ourselves. We spent a lot of time uh, setting up lessons and delivering them to each other and practicing transitions from one thing to the next and how that would look. The second part that came out of that first week was, all right, we're gonna trans, um, excuse me, transition from the Zoom, Google Classroom 
and seesaw and get into more of what we call peer training, uh, which would be more of the platforms that I'm going to discuss in the technology up, um, update. So we took the professionals that are experts in these areas and did breakout sessions and small group learning to allow leveled platforms. Not everyone needs to be in Zoom 101. There are people that are experts in that. There's not everyone that needs to be in Pear Deck 101. So we were able to target these levels for these professionals so that they were able to make some growth no matter where they were. And one of the, the positive feedbacks that we got at the end of the second week is I can't believe how much I grew in a short period of time. It's because we targeted it and people didn't feel lost or confused or, or intimidated to ask questions. We really put it at their level so that they were able to excel. And then last, I think one of our most important pieces is, is our staff as a whole received over six hours of trauma-informed training through, um, I call her Dr. Janessa. Uh, she spent time with our staff um, going through what students have experienced in the past couple months, perhaps in their life uh, with their friends, um, with what's going on at home, how to handle virtual learning, de-escalation, all of those things that you can, we keep talking about the social emotional aspect, um, our staff spent a great deal. And this was their recommendation uh, coming from, from their experiences. People have seen um, her before uh, and we had some really powerful moments over those two days. Excellent, Mike, and if I could? Yes. Yeah, so one, one uh, last piece to this, you know, this has been a, a great opportunity to, to really self-reflect in terms of you know, how effective and how efficient we are. So we're, we're looking at platforms, all platforms, including just about every business component of, of running a school district. And so um, I've shared with, with uh, Mike in terms of our planning, our transition, um, how do we become more efficient and effective with a platform where, where we can do everything that we need to do, uh, less paper, more efficient uh, in a remote kind of way. And so we're, we're looking at um, a platform which I believe will be able to bring everything onto one platform, which is which will be great. So if you think about it this way, I know you know there's so many things that go on in a in a school district that require approvals on multiple levels. So even even like a conference that somebody wants to attend or mileage or all those things are paper that goes all over you know to, to several places. So these are all things that can be put on one platform. You know, one stop shopping, if you will, will be able to run uh, the district. Um, remotely or in person, but in a more efficient and effective manner. So we're working that out now um, and we, we should have something uh, in the next um, next month or so that uh, will, will, will help us. So we're excited about that. Thanks, Mike. All right, so leading into this week, um, this is the time that we took the opportunity to, to do more building specific work. So uh, less whole group of 155 people, uh, more small group within themselves, you see a lot, you'll see a lot of grade level, team level, whether you're a special ed, OT, PT, a lot of small group work. Uh, I think at this point of the game, uh, one of the best things that we can provide the staff is time and allowing them to feel prepared for what's coming. It's new for everybody. It's new for our staff. And, and we've said it before, administration, families. So we want to just make sure that we have everything in a, lot, in a row so that we can try and be prepared for all the things that we believe are going to happen. That was one of the questions I posed in the very beginning of this is try and think about what's going to be happening on the other end. Think about the student who might not have the support for 20 minutes or may not have it for an hour. How do we support everyone during this time? And the staff did a really great job of putting together a list where we were all able to see everyone's thoughts and ideas of questions that were popping up and they did an outstanding job. Technology training, that is, we did a few more here that people requested, more about supporting the teachers who felt like they needed some more work from last week. So a couple repeat sessions. Um, we wanted to make sure that uh, the staff knew how to have students log on, I'm trying to answer all those questions. And when I get to the technology update, I'll explain a little bit more. We don't want parents feeling like they're lost or on their own through this next transition into virtual. We wanna make sure that we've planned and prepared to help support so that it's easier at home than it was in the spring. And last um, is you're seeing the, the time that people are spending for open houses. Uh, we really wanted to make it personal. We didn't want it to just pop up on Monday or Tuesday for the first time. We wanted to be able to explain some of our new online practices and procedures and really get to hear the, the, the teacher's voice for the first time as we build these new relationships. 
Okay, technology. As you can imagine, technology has been a heavy point um, as we are going to begin in virtual learning. I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, feels like forever ago, uh, but we are about a day away from Clever, uh, which is a platform I mentioned before, uh, being ready to go for our district. I really feel like Clever is going to solve, I'm not going to throw a percentage out there because someone will hold me to it, but I, I want to say that it's going to solve a, a, a lot of our issues that we were experiencing this spring, meaning uh, Mr. Flynn told us to go here. How do I get there? How do I log on? What do I do? So what we've done with Clever is we have now, it's a single sign-on platform. Uh, it's going to be an icon on the student's Chromebook or, or iPad or easily accessible on our, on our webpage. And basically, it's going to be their single area to go for everything. Uh, they'll never have to ask for a password because of how we've set it up. So if they have to go to Zoom one second and then Mystery Science the next, or then they need to go to Reflex Math, all they'll be doing is clicking on the links and it'll be taking there and logging them into where they need to be. We really think that this is gonna provide a lot of that uh, support at home. So parents aren't going to have to navigate for the students on how to get there. Uh, and it's certainly gonna help our teachers on our end, uh, knowing that again, they won't be doing a lot of the problem solving. They'll be more of the educating and, and connecting with the students because we're eliminating that, that, that step. Mike, you wanna so, also indicate um... What's so clever about Clever? I, right. All right. How much does it cost? Yeah. So it's free. And it's not really free. Well, <laughs> it's built into the, this is what's so clever about Clever. Clever doesn't sell the single sign on option to the district. It's built into the programs that you build. So they, mm -hmm. they, they're actually purchased by the programs that you actually purchase. So it's built into something that you've already bought. That's why it's not necessary to ever go on. It's, it, it's not necessary to ever buy another single sign-on option. That's what makes Clever so clever because they, they've kind of cornered the market in terms of single sign-on. But um, it's an interesting not, concept. Not, not just corner. They're dominating now um, for what's happened over the past three months. Um, and and we're really, we really feel great about it. Um, so in regards to the device, device preparations, um, <laughs> We've had to wipe, I don't want to get too technological on you guys, but basically we've had to not wipe with sanitizer wipes, but we've had to clean out all of our iPads, um, all 75 of them uh, in order to um, deliver them to kindergarten. And we had to wipe them because they were iPads that could have been K through eight. Uh, so we had to wipe them clean, install the apps that those teachers are looking for uh, and get ready to deploy them. Uh, the, the five through eight, uh, Chromebooks had to get them ready. Uh, so a lot of that device preparation is what's been coming on of the technology department, um, as well as supporting the staff and their needs. Uh, so if you can imagine uh, the wants and the needs that are coming in through through the school district on how to help deliver better virtual instruction, we've been trying to do that, whether it be through, um, you know, Elmo cameras that we've placed order on or uh, interactive, um, uh, um, excuse me, some of the platforms that we're, we're talking about. So we, we're, we, we just upgraded to Pear Deck. Uh, Pear Deck. Um, we have Read Write. Um, we, so we have these new things that are, that are, that are going to help deliver our instruction with our students. Um, so we've been helping train and support at that time. Okay, last is the Chromebook. And I, I believe Dr. Metzler gave you an update on that about a week ago. Um, we contacted them today, and, and I just, just for people that are listening, I think it's fair that when we put this out to bid, we had to put it out to bid, bid per policy, um, and we put on there, um, you know, delivery dates because we know the whole world's chasing Chromebooks at the time, uh, and part of the delivery date was anticipated for last Friday. Um, we got an update last week that they were going to be delivered this Friday. We spoke with them today. Um, they feel good about it. However, I, I just, I'm planning for the worst because I feel that's the best way to do it. Um, so if they do get delivered on Friday, we'll be able to turn around. We're going to work this weekend and turn them around for Monday. Um, if they don't get delivered on Friday, that means they're anticipating Monday, which means we'll turn them around as quick as I can. Um, so really, we'll send out an update to the first and second grade parents as soon as we have a hard delivery timeline. Um, you know, I spoke with Dr. Metzler earlier on this today. Um, it's, it's obviously not the best news to deliver, but it's also 
it's not awful news. Um, if if I'm looking around at some districts, I hear that they're not they're not getting their Chromebooks till you know November December type of thing. Um, so we're really working close. This the supplier has been outstanding for us. They've never let us down. Um, so once we know, we'll communicate that information out on a firm timeline on when that may occur. We've already communicated to the, the teachers to be prepared um, for what it may and may not be. Uh, so first and second grade are already working on alternative plans. Um, as we've been saying throughout these couple of weeks, uh, expect the unexpected in 2020. Um, so we're planning and preparing for everything and, and we're gonna try and do our best. Okay, Francine. Good evening. Um, I just want to um, share that our special education staff have been working very hard to try and plan for both uh, virtual as well as in-person services across the district. We have um, 54 students scheduled at this point in time to receive in-person services um, beginning on Tuesday. 46 of them are at HCS and nine are at HMS and the 46 do include preschool students as well. Services will be provided Monday through Friday, and we have transportation needs at this point for 21 students. Um, staff are also in the process of scheduling the, um, and actually have started, the compensatory slash COVID impact meetings. They're currently underway. Um, these are all based on the number of students we have identified at this point in time, and there are 146 between Central School and the Middle School. And then at Pinkerton Academy and out of district, there are 76 meetings. So all of these need to be held um, by September, um, a month, which is October 14th, within 30 days of the start of school. Our evaluations are um, underway as well. They're being conducted in person and they will be at both schools. At this time, we have 34 um, in process, which includes those that are currently um, have proposals that are actually active right now, as well as those that are carried over from the spring. But this doesn't include referrals that are coming in next week, the week after. It, it will be ongoing, but right now we're at 34. So our staff are planning to um, take care of those in person at both schools. Okay, Mike, can I, you want to go back to special ed for a minute, please? Yeah, my fault. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, so as far as special education goes, um, you know, now obviously uh, we needed to figure out capacity, you know, what, what could we do? How much can we do in person? And, and we realize, we acknowledge um, that, you know, these are individual education plans. Each situation, each case is very, very different and the needs are very, very different. So we wanna, we wanna proceed with, um, with equity in mind, making sure that we take whatever resources we have and we distribute them to those that need the most, right? Our most vulnerable population or our most, um, our neediest population in terms of um, the kind of supports that they might need. So now in the event that if, um, any parents that are listening, if you're a dissatisfied parent and, um, and you've tried to work this out and, and our staff has done a great job. So this is not, has nothing to do with our staff. They've done exactly what we've asked them to do. Um, but you, you don't feel like, you know, you're, the services that you're getting are enough or are rich enough in, in a sense or um, are meeting your needs. You know, people are wondering, okay, what do you do next, right? So I, I would encourage those parents to, to reach out um, either to, to myself or Mr. Flynn uh, with an email or both of us, just copy both. Uh, we certainly will investigate and see what we can do, right? We can't um, provide services that we don't have, obviously, and, uh, and I know our staff is, is doing, doing the best they can, but um, I just, just wanted to put that out there just in case, um, you know, there are, we don't, we don't want anyone to struggle. We certainly don't want the gaps to increase uh, we want to make sure that we're, we're providing the kind of support. I can't make any promises that, w that we can do everything for everyone, but uh, we certainly will look at each case individually and, and do the very best that we can. And, and hopefully that you can trust that, that that's what we're doing during this, this really difficult period. Um, you know, and in the event that there's, there's reparations, if you will, if there's um, services that we need to catch up on because, you know, of these 20, 25 odd days, um, that's, that's another thing too, you know, in terms of how can we make up some of those services if we need to? So uh, we'll, we'll look at it case by case. And, um, you know, I, I would say, uh, we'll, again, I'll give you my word that we'll, we'll do the very best we can for each and every student and family, um, depending on what those needs are. And of course, depending on, uh, on what we have for services. So I hope that that, you know, because I know if, you know, you were communicated a particular plan, 
Um, you know, I've had a couple of people reach out and they, if they weren't necessarily satisfied with the plan, they weren't quite sure what to do next. Um, so, um, you know, we're not suggesting that we go to mediation or those kind of things. Just, just give us a chance to really investigate research and, and see, um, is there any way that we can, you know, come to a, um, you know, some sort of agreement that, that meets your needs. And uh, we're gonna, we'll try to do that for every family and uh, we'll be honest about what we can and cannot do uh, in this difficult time. So we appreciate um, you understanding. And again, just, just reach out to, to Mr. Flynn or myself, both of us would probably be the best because um, that way we can certainly have a conversation certainly with, uh, with Francine Flynn and, uh, and take a look at what we might be able to do. Okay, thanks Mike. Okay, Jeff. Are you all right, a uh, little Thanks. facilities update. Uh, we've got all the exhaust vents except for one up and running. That one is at uh, HCS and it needs a little bit more of attention, uh, some electrical work done to it. It was more of a power problem, but we're looking real good with the exhaust vents. Uh, all unit ventilators have been fully maintained, all filters changed and they're running very well. Uh, cleaning and maintenance. Uh, more thorough daily cleaning routine has been put in motion that way all the classrooms that have been and are being occupied have now been getting uh, beefed up a little bit with cleaning. Cleaning supplies are now being stocked up as our vendors are uh, getting more products into their warehouses. That's been tricky uh, for the few months, but we've been able to score some cleaning supplies. Uh, and one little positive with the extended time over the uh, summer, we've been able to get many other repairs that have been uh, pushed off, completed throughout both the buildings as well as uh, workspace clean out and organization. That's kind of an ongoing thing just to make it a more, a more efficient, easier to clean environment. And last but not least, the indoor air quality testing has been finished. It wrapped up on Friday and the results should be in this week. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Um, Dr. Messer, do you want to go first on this one or me? It's up to you. Certainly. Um, I, I certainly can kick this off. So what, what um, I think, you know, part of our discussion, right, really is um, our, our experience has been, you know, we talked um, at great detail uh, over the last few meetings about, about three phases, about, you know, what this first phase would look like, you know, how we get to phase two. The ultimate goal really is, is to, to all be back together in phase three. You know, phase two, you know, talking about a hybrid kind of approach, you know, my research and certainly conversation that seems to be the least effective. So our hope is that we'll be able to maybe even go from, I can't promise this, but from phase one to phase three, we're still working on that in terms of comfort level. One of the things, one of the um, things is we have to identify, you know, our capacity. What's our capacity to uh, support um, bringing students back, not just special needs students, but any students, all students, athletes, uh, and having some, um, some sheltered space. So we looked into, um, three uh, large tents. Um, you can see there, well, 40 by 40, 40 by 20 uh, with walls. And um, the, these, these tents, um, we, given the, the opportunity for the board to, to consider one, two, or three, all three um, tents uh, with the costs associated. And right now um, in this particular um, you know, part or phase one, if you would, um, we can talk about usage, you know, certainly after school programs, music, the arts, athletics, those sorts of things. And in any event that we needed some sort of covered space, um, we, we would have that kind of shelter. And certainly these would be effective um, moving forward. But we can talk a little bit more about the, the, the specific usage. But I think that this would be a valuable resource. I think the, the prices are really, um, this company was really good to us because uh, as you, uh, not that we went out to bid, but we kind of went out to bid. We, we obviously looked for a lot of different places where we thought we could get prices and, and pricing was really all over the place. Um, you know, from what we're showing you tonight to, you know, three and four times this. So, um, Mike, if you want to jump in and we can talk a little bit about how we use them at the central school and middle school um, in each phase and then uh, give the board an opportunity to, to consider if this is something that would be a good investment for, um, for our Hampstead schools. Yeah, and to echo what Dr. Metz said, this is something that's been brought up by board members and, and also people, uh, our professional staff, on, on, on ways that we can host um, other activities other than athletics safely. Um, just real quickly, specifically on the cost there, I, I, I don't want to be um, fooling anybody. The, the 4163 for a 40 by 40, that's just for one of them. So if we were to do two, that would, that would obviously multiply that by two. 
the reason why we looked into putting one on the central school campus was uh, more about being able to use multiple areas, areas of our campuses. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be dedicated during phase one specifically to central school. Uh, you may see other um, things, uh, excuse me, other after school activities from middle school might use that 10 if necessary, um, whatever it may be. So uh, it was it was being able to find the most space for outdoor uh, with the possibility of having it covered. Um, the walls were, uh, you know, obviously another uh, it's another option that we that we get priced out and that would be to, to price in the t uh, excuse me to, to wall in the tents they roll up and roll down I'm sure many of you can do a wedding with these um, so it would allow for circulation uh, if needed but also be able to close it um, if it were to prevent you know let's say misting or whatever else might be going on in the environment at that time um, it's important to note that you know during phase one we had a lot of people um, reach out to us, uh, not, not just from the community, but also from internally with our staff uh, about uh, how we're proceeding with athletics and what are other ways to get our students involved uh, through music, uh, through clubs, leadership groups, uh, other ways to bring small groups in uh, safely so that we can continue some of the things that we're going we're gonna to begin during virtual learning. Um, and we looked into these options. Um, the reason why you see the courtyard one uh, that would be obviously in the middle school courtyard um, when we transition to phase two or three. Um, it'll allow for that uh, to be obviously in a locked environment. When we talk about uh, the outdoor tents, we're going to have to have, find different ways to, to provide those outdoor learnings uh, at a safe time. I know we've mentioned Triple E before. Um, you know, Officer Conway would be involved in, in, in the classrooms and the scheduling. So um, we can be, we can use these uh, certainly to their, uh, to their needs or capacities, um, but it also just provides another avenue for us to, to make sure that we're able to meet the needs. Dr. Metzler, anything else before we move forward on that one? No, I, I think, you know, and, and as you look at phase one and, you know, just, just obviously thinking out loud, you know, once you have the resource, obviously we would build on, on usage. So um, just as this was on the heels of the special ed talk, you know, that it could potentially be a, um, a space where uh, we could do some of that work as well. You know, it's, um, you know, bringing in small groups. I mean, the, the goal really um, in terms of social emotional is, is for some students, it's, um, the, they need to see their classmates and I know they see them on Zoom, but not, they need to see them in person somehow, some way. So if this would be a safe way to get, get people um, and also to, to phase us from maybe one to three or one to two to three, uh, this would be a nice, nice resource to have um, if it's something that we feel like we can support. So um, I, I'm sure we could, we could talk about this more. Um, we certainly could take questions. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Uh, it's, it's embedded in a presentation. So I think uh, that's all, that's all we had on this for now. Okay. We can certainly finish it at the end. There's only, I think one more. Um, Mr. Dowd, you want to speak to the food service update? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. The, uh, by way of update of uh, perhaps some good news, the uh, USDA has granted the Department of Ed a waiver to continue on um, to be able to serve uh, breakfast and lunch meals at no cost to our students. And I think that that has changed a little bit of, um, of the scope of what we were looking um, at in terms of service. The program runs until December 31st, 2020, or until funding for the program runs out. So we will be finalizing some plans on distribution, which will be out of the middle school uh, for times for pickup for families who may be interested. This is not uh, a free or reduced uh, qualifying uh, uh, matter. This, you don't have to be qualified for free or reduced at all. Um, I would encourage you to apply if you felt there was uh, a qualification for it, but you certainly don't have to qualify. Parents can pick up uh, meals on behalf of the children. The children don't have to really be there, get out of the car. I think that we're going to be working on on having this um, take place on at the um, perhaps at the outside of the middle school. So uh, look for details to come. But that was a, a good development, I think, to come through that that they are allowing um, meals to be served no no charge through December thirty first. Mr. Flynn. Thanks, Jeff. Um, I just want to reiterate that that those plans will be emailed out um, as you uh, as you just mentioned. Because of that change, we had our initial plan and expect the unexpected. We had to develop a, a new way. Um, so you'll certainly be seeing those come to your inbox uh, when ready. Just an update on the CARES Act, and Mr. Dow can speak to it too, but we, we just wanted to communicate that we're, the Hampstead School District received uh, roughly $50,000 uh, 
Um, and we are figuring out the way to use that uh, to the best of our ability. Uh, it can it can lead towards uh, the you know the, the purchasing of the the virtual platforms that we spoke about. Uh, Pear Deck. Um, we did uh, purchase a new special ed testing program. Um, you can also work with us on the PPE things of that nature. That's just more of a, an information piece for you guys. Another one, uh, the state has notified us that we will need to complete state testing um, from October 1st through the 30, 31st, and that's grades four through eight with the understanding that fourth graders will actually be taking third grade tests, fifth grade will be taking the fourth grade, if you wanna keep up with me here, so forth and so on. Um, we're in process with the administration on developing a plan. Um, and once we have that plan in place, uh, we will be communicating that with families so that we can make sure that everything's ready to roll. Phase two and three, uh, I know Dr. Metzler has mentioned this several times, um, already starting to plan, you know, in our presentation a few weeks ago, Mr. Collins did a great job of, of discussing what both buildings are already working on. You know, things in one-way classrooms, spacing, uh, things to prepare the facility uh, to to welcome back uh, the staff and the students. And then last, Mike, uh, the school me, calendar. Uh, oh, yeah, me, go ahead. Let me talk a little yep. bit about phase two and phase three. Yeah. So obviously, um, you know, as, as I discussed earlier, you know, the, the way these phases work, the way you're successful is obviously the, the people that are, you know, in the trenches um, need to be able to, to feel comfortable and, and, and be able to... Um, just feel like everything's in place for them to do a great job. And so I think that's where we are in terms of trying to, um, you know, put our fingers on the pulse and, and find how staff feels about phase two and phase three. I truly believe that they're going to need to experience a few days um, into next week. And then, you know, we'll be reaching back out again to try to get an, another feeling, but we had, we had some really solid numbers, uh, preliminary numbers, but uh, they haven't really experienced phase one yet. So it's hard to, to, to really know how you'll feel about phase two and or phase three. I think on the heels of the state testing though, needing to bring in grades four through eight in small cohorts um, to get the testing done, we believe that's going to take somewhere between eight and 10 days. So uh, I think that may be phase two. I mean, and, you know, and then we may be right into phase three. Um, but again, that's going to take some, uh, some work. I certainly, um, you know, we want everyone to feel comfortable and feel like we're ready for each phase uh, and phases can be, can be quick. They don't necessarily need to go on for, you know, 25 to 30 days. So um, again, you know, we said right from the beginning, our, our goal is to get everybody back in person um, feeling confident and comfortable that it's a safe learning environment for all. Uh, we can't make any promises, but what we can promise you is that we will work really, really hard to deliver on that goal. That's really to get everybody back as soon as possible. So I think the state testing, although it, it comes as a bad time, it, it may be um, something that might help. You know, as, as you know, we're watching the other districts that have chosen other options very carefully. Uh, and quite, quite frankly, it's, um, you know, it's, you know, day, day one, we, we had a couple hits already. So it's, uh, we, we, we need to make sure that uh, our staff and our students are safe and then, and then build on that. I think uh, that's going to be important, but I think, that's demanded, that, that mandated testing um, is going to be an opportunity for us to, to do something as soon as October, no, in early October. Again, I, you know, I mentioned it's going to take eight to 10 days in, in cohorts to get, to get that testing done. So um, we're working on that. I think we'll bring something to you on the 22nd of September. That's our next meeting uh, that will address the testing schedule. And then um, we'll be talking a little bit more about um, how people felt about the first eight or so days and, and, uh, and uh, what we have for survey results in terms of how staff feels about what's next, you know, where they really feel strongly, what we, we can do really well um, in keeping everybody safe and comfortable and confident that we're doing the best job. So uh, we'll have all that data for you um, as, as in, in several weeks. So uh, thanks, Mike. And then we had the school calendar challenge. I know the school calendar was updated today um, based on the start of school, which we, we already was approved, but we're going to need to bring the um, school calendar to you uh, in on the 22nd uh, to make some minor adjustments. We, remember we talked about election day and, and maybe some other adjustments that, that we'll need to make um, to make uh, the school calendar uh, work for uh, both of our schools. Right? I don't know, Mike, if you had anything more on the calendar. Oh, you wrapped it up. So again, we, that is now live. Uh, we sent that email out today with the updated for the, the start of school. And then we are meeting 
um, essentially what we would already be doing for the 21-22 school year, um, but we're going to redo the process for the 2021 school year to incorporate some timelines for parents in regards to parent-teacher conferences, uh, quarter quarter timelines, things of that nature, and we'll bring that to you next week. Or excuse me, two weeks feels like next week. Well, and 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 we had planned on on you know making those adjustments during this this week and, and making sure that the uh, website and all those things were up to date. But that was really the result of a, a parent email, and obviously that calendar was creating some anxiety uh, for folks to, to to going on and looking at it. So, um, you know, Mike with this tech team was able to get that straightened out today, and and certainly we'll bring it to you to get the rest of the dates straightened out uh, moving forward uh, in terms of uh, making sure that communication is solid and everybody knows exactly you know, where they need to be, when they need to be there, and, and, and what school looks like um, as we move forward. So uh, we appreciate that, um, you know, any parents that, that pick up on those things that uh, are helpful uh, for them, and, um, and and when maybe not as timely as as they would have liked, uh, you know, certainly send us emails, and uh, we, 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 uh, we take them, we talk about them, and then we, we, we take action uh, if we feel it's appropriate. So that was something that was important. I think people need to be able to click on a calendar and feel 100% confident that that's the calendar. So um, again, thank that parent for sending that email because that uh, that got us working on that first thing today. Thanks, Mike. So that completes our directors and principals update. Uh, time for questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Flynn. Um, yes, questions from board members about anything that was presented. I can start, I have questions. Okay, I'll go first, David, maybe we overlap anyways. Um, so obviously the 10th, um, which I think if we can do this right is, is a good resource to utilize. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised it's not more money, um, that the cost isn't greater there. Um, I thought for that amount of time it would be higher. My question comes down to security, which is kind of a Mixed question because we've already talked about we've got some athletics going on. So, you know, we're acknowledging that we have kids out on the field then. Um, but any, and this may be something that I'm actually probably sure you've already started discussing this with Detective Conway. Um, but anything you guys can talk about knowing that sometimes security um, questions we can't answer um, in a general public format. So if this is something we need to talk about in a different way please feel free to just let us know that. Um, but any anything about security that we've, that's been considered or is being talked about? Well, I, I, can, I can take that, um, Mike. So I, I think, um, yeah, in terms of public confidence about security, uh, those discussions have been taking place, you know, so our SRO, in structured activities that would be um, classroom space, we certainly would be different than something that was outside already. Um, so mm -hmm. those are those are some things we have to take into consideration. Clearly, our 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 children are outside um, in structured activities. So uh, this would be um, something that we need to do. It's certainly not a plan, as you already indicated. It's not a plan that we would discuss publicly. Um, but I want parents to feel comfortable that we will have the proper security to make sure our our children are safe in the event that we use the tents for any kind of learning um, space during the traditional school day, especially. Um, and after school, we'd have the traditional, um, you know, we, we do what we always do for um, our outside activities, like our sports. And, you know, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, again, we kept talking about me in a minute. I'm, I'm hoping that we'll be able to use this space for, um, you know, I don't know, is it play practice? Is it, is it um, you know, uh, our band? Is it our chorus? Is it any of the arts, um, you know, is uh, that we'll have an opportunity to do those things. And Mike, and Mike had already indicated, you know, clubs, you know, then those can vary. Uh, we want to make sure that, that, that those um, groups are able to meet in person. It's gonna create some um, tr transportation challenges for families, but uh, in the event that they can get students to and from um, after school, um, that's something we could use during this phase. I don't know if we mentioned the time frame. Um, maybe it was on the slide and I, I didn't say it, but you know, we're looking at these tents from real soon to right through Thanksgiving to the end of, of November. So uh, I'm with you, Caitlin. I've, yeah. seen, I've seen tents <laughs> cost a lot more than what, what they're asking for uh, yeah. for a weekend event. Um, you know, people are paying mm -hmm. that kind of money. Uh, they uh, so they they were they were really good. They wanted to help us. They understand the challenges. Thank you, sure. David. I know you kind of had your hand up. Yeah. So if you want to uh, go ahead, just along the tents, I just want to confirm: were you 
is it two tenths Dr. Mentor that we're looking for? It's three in total. There was, um, that's where I think Mike indicated that, that one price that was, those are the two bigger tents, I believe. Right, Mike? And then one's a 40 by 20 tent. Yep. I'll pop it back up for you guys for a visual, for you visual learners. Okay. And then as far as, um, are we thinking about any type of heating for those so that we could use them extended into, um, like you said, till November or later, maybe? So we, we, oh, we did get, yeah, we, we obviously we looked into that. Okay. That's why we got quoted for the walls. You're right. The heating kind of drove it pretty, pretty much through the roof. If, okay. if we're being honest. Yeah, no, no, I, I figured that as much. Uh, that's why I figured it wasn't on this. Um, so that makes sense. Um, I think, it, it, you know, that, that gets us up through Thanksgiving and, you know, it, we could have, obviously we could have days in the thirties, but we could have days in the seventies. We just don't know. Um, you know. I think, you know, I think if the kids are, if we're using them for outside activities, I think, um, you know, the kids bundle up, you know, hat, yeah. gloves, maybe. So yeah, uh, with right. the walls, I think the walls will at least cut down on the, on the wind, you know, right. coming from any one direction. Um, yeah. So we'd still get good airflow, but, uh, but not, not so it's ridiculous. You know? Yeah. I was just curious if we'd have considerations even going in further into, you know, but I know heat is expensive and it'd just be literally going out the, out the walls. Um, all right. No worries. Um, the next one is um, on IEPs. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Metzl, for going over that. I know we've had uh, exchanged some emails and uh, messages on this. Um, my only other question on top of, you know, going through it is with the IEPs, are we considering as we go into phase two or phase three, whatever that looks like in October, that we could possibly bring um, some of those students in sooner that are, you know, the ones that need a little extra service, a little extra help and try to catch them up on what they may be um, losing right now with um, having, you know, smaller blocks of time. That, that's certainly, Dave, that's certainly the hope um, is to make sure that we can offer, again, about capacity and then trying to look at them case by case. So we're not trying to paint everybody with the same brush. We know, we know some students need more than others. And so uh, we, don't, we kind of want to work closely with the team. But the short answer to that is yes, we'd like to get uh, that population um, in, in as soon as possible. So I think, you know, uh, looking at the tents, looking at the building, looking at what we have for staff, um, having an opportunity to... Um, you know, to talk to Francine and see, you know, what, what we have, um, what we can do, how can we increase? I mean, I, I would really love to be able to get through phase one and feel like everybody got exactly what they needed. Um, you know, is that realistic? Uh, I don't know. You know, I, I mean, I know if, if I was expecting five days and I only got three days, um, I would not be satisfied, you know, or if I had a student that I know needs, you know, daily, you know, and, and, and it's every other day or, you know, those sorts of things. So I think those are case by case and, um, you know, people had asked, you know, what's the process? And, you know, I basically, I've inserted myself in the past in different, at different places during every process. Every process is a little bit different. Um, it's, it's a, not, I don't want to call it a negotiation because it's, it's really, it's really not that. It's, uh, it's more about um, just trying to come to a compromise where we can continue to make sure that everybody's getting everything they need, but, but with the spirit of equity, making sure that the people that need it most um, at some point. Now, uh, that's to say, if you have an IEP that you're obligated to provide services, we're obligated to provide the services, and we will. That's a contract. Um, we will meet that need. Uh, and I think um, you bring up a good point. If if there was a phase two or if there was, you know, the, something right before the next phase, whatever the next phase is, even if it's phase three, um, can we get those students in earlier? Um, and so, you know, um, you know, the answer is yes. We're going to try to do our best to get everybody exactly what's in their IEP and um, in person as much as possible. Thank you for that. Um, two other ones uh, real quick is, um, you know, you brought up the feedback from the um, parents, I mean, from the teachers, which was great. That was going to be my question. How are we collecting the feedback from the teachers? How are we supporting them? Great to hear that that's what you're going to be incorporating and bringing to us on the 22nd. Uh, will there be a way for parents and students to also participate? Um, I know it will only be one week of classes, but are you um, planning some way that you provide that feedback also to the board? On the 22nd for um, again for parents and uh, students. Yeah, we're we're looking at that um, at, at something. You know, this is what's been great about this. This has really made everybody far more efficient in terms of replying, right? So we send something out and, and and it gets a lot of activity really quickly. It doesn't need to be open for three or four days, right? So if something on that either that first Friday of that first week or something on that Monday, I need enough time for them to put together 
um, you know, take a look at the data and put, make sense of it. It's not, it doesn't take a really long time. It just takes a little bit of time, but yep. um, yeah, we, 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 we're going to want to hear from students and certainly from families um, as uh, each week, really. But um, that, that first week, that'd be great to have something for the 22nd. So we can plan on that, um, Mike, as, as, as also um, you know, part of that presentation on the opening of school. You know, what did that first week look like? Um, you know, what did we do well? You know, what, what were some of our challenges that we maybe didn't do as well and, and, and what are the things we need to work on? But I certainly want to hear from the, the customers, right? So and, and that's really, that's the, you know, and I want to break it out differently. I, I want to hear from families. I want to hear from parents for sure. But I really want to hear from the kids as well. Um, and so those can be, I don't know how we triangulate that information, but let's put something together where we can get um, information from both. Okay. Thank you. Uh, last one. This one's kind of a more of a statement of, you, you mentioned earlier about, you know, um, feeling comfortable for um, whatever that next phase is. Will we still be looking at having some guiding metrics some guidelines that you're going to bring to us on the 22nd as far as what's going to make it so that, you know, what's a phase two versus phase three and how do we monitor that as whichever phase we're in during that time frame of how do we stay in or advance and go further? My hope is yes. I mean, I want to, I want to see, you know, what it looks like now. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if there's, See, here's the thing. So there's different metrics, as you know, right? So I could say, um, in the event that this is the metric we're going to follow, you know, there are other things that are not necessarily metrics, but it's about how does the staff and how do the students and how the families feel and, you know, how many, you know, what, what percentage of people are we going to have to be able to deliver in person? Um, how many people still want it in person? Um, in a perfect world, um, I think the staff that indicates that they feel comfortable doing it in person matches exactly the percentage of the students that want to come in person. And if we have a, a population that chooses remote, you know, one of the things I think that I was most concerned about is, you know, is some families that chose to homeschool, um, but they're only homeschooling during this period of time and, and have every intention of um, uh, coming back when, when we're back to normal. I, I just want to keep them, um, you know, part of the Hampstead family as we, as, as they are anyway, but uh, making sure that they don't they don't develop gaps in curriculum because of um, because of this COVID nineteen and a choice they they felt like they were forced to make. So uh, if if we can get back to that choice piece, and I don't know what the number is, if it's if it's five to ten percent of the uh, families want us to continue to offer remote, I'll, I'll, I'm going to need a remote team to do that. I'm not going to ask people to do two jobs every day. Um, I think I think we can probably come up with something, uh, but again, we're going to need to know what those numbers are, and I think that's a metric as well. So, you know, is it, is it the number of cases? Is it, uh, you know, that's a, that's a lengthy discussion as to what we're going to commit to, you know, we're committing to CDC guidelines, but um, you know, what are we going to commit to? And I think I can tell you that we are committed to getting everybody back in person at some point. Right. And uh, hopefully sooner than later, that's something we've committed to now that's work, right? Cause we got to get everybody comfortable and confident that it's safe. And um, you know, we're getting there, we're getting there, but I think, it's part of, um, I think they're going to need to experience phase one and the com I think comfort level will, will increase. And I think um, as we bring back some of our most vulnerable or needy students and we have our testing, I, I, I think I, I, I can see a process that gets us to where we want to be, which is everybody back at some point in the near future. Uh, I don't know if, if it's going to be a scientific method that gets us there. I think it, I think it's going to be a little bit qualitative in some ways about how people feel, right? So Numbers will drive it to some degree, but I think people need to feel confident that it's safe as well. And I, I do believe we're, we're, we're getting there, even though all this other stuff has happened around us. Um, I don't know if that answers your question or if you're specifically looking for a, a scientific method of this number gets us there, right? I don't know if that's, if that's what you're looking for. I mean, I, I think you've, you've made some good points here, Dr. Metzler, that yes, we want to go with we, we would love to be able to say we can just make this decision if we get to this point. But there are a lot of variables here. Um, I do also want to say I'm a little leery about having feedback ready for the 22nd, um, only because we're only a week into the official start of school at that point. Um, well, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's first impression. You know, they get five, six days, you know, compare it to the spring. Right. I mean, if we, if we word the question, yeah, yeah. is it better? You know, are we doing a better job with remote learning than we did in the spring when that was more of an emergency response? Um, we've had time to plan. Right. Um, I'd like to collect some of that because I, I, I know, I, I already think I already know mm -hmm. the answers, but um, you know, I know, I know we're doing a better job. Um, I think everybody's doing a better job everywhere uh, with that because they've had some time. 
to plan and pick pick platforms that make sense and get get the kind of technology. But yeah, I don't think that's an end all be all though in terms of data, Caitlin. I think, but I don't think it's harmful to kind of just get an idea about how people feel, you know, because if they're tremendously no, not you know. You know. Yeah, and maybe um, I guess maybe what I'm thinking is two phases of feedback. Um, the first one that maybe is ready for the 22nd um, being what you said, how is this first week gone? You know, where is it better than last spring, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, see what's hard is the way that the calendar falls. We don't have another meeting until the 13th of October, which I know feels kind of far. Um, no, but that, you but know, I think the, we need to, but that 13th of October date or whatever that next, that next meeting is, I'm not, that's, yeah. the date, that's definitely the date. I don't have it in front of me. Um, yeah, I have, it's on the bottom of my agenda. So yeah. <laughs> I'm cheating because Melissa has me well prepared. All right. Well, I can see it now because it's in mine's over here. The, um, I think that that's, <laughs> a, um, I think that that's when we're asking that question about, you know, what are we, our next move, right? What are you comfortable with? What's mm -hmm. our next move, right? I think we, we're defining mm -hmm. what our next move is. I think that's the data we're collecting at that point. You know, who's ready yeah. to do this and who needs a different choice, right? And so that we're providing mm -hmm. choice because you and I talked about choice all spring. That's really where we wanted to get, right? At some point, we're going to need to provide right. choice primarily because some people aren't going to feel comfortable until there's a vaccine. Did hear that the vaccine, they're optimistic about it being in, in early November. Dr. Fauci today, right? Same. He thinks he'll have a, a vaccine earlier than later. Time will tell. But, um, you know, so, but for some people, that's that's their that's where they are and that's fine. That, that, mm -hmm. That's their own choice. That they, I get it. That's that's what they're going to feel safe. Um, yeah, so I, I think there's a series of data that, you know, and it may even be another, you know, there might be more than two, it might be three times uh, where we're, we're figuring out, you know, I mean, I think if we, if we go from one to two to three, it's definitely going to be three times because I want to know how they feel about the, you know, phase one and then what's our next move and then, you know, how are we doing? We're going to, we're going to need to make sure that um, we continue to make sure that everybody feels um, confident and comfortable that it's safe, right? Um, you yeah. Know, you, lots of eyes and lots of ears. So people are going to, are going to have an opportunity to see, um, you know, what we're doing and, and, and comment, um, constructive criticism that it only make us all better. But, um, so yep. right, does that make sense? I mean, for that Thank September you. 22nd, I think, I don't know. I just think it's important to bring back the opening of school, just how it's cause this is such an unusual mm -hmm. opening. You know, I'd like to hear how people felt about the parade. I'd like to feel how, how they felt about open house, how they felt about, uh, remote learning now as compared to last spring, um, you know, what kind of support, social, emotional support, um, you know, did you have an opportunity to connect with classmates in one of our activities that we're trying to offer, whether it's athletics or the arts, um, you know, and, um, you know, and maybe, maybe between now and then you can talk somebody into cross country, coaching cross country, um, you know, maybe a board member or two want to coach, right? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, that, that's, um, no. that's, that's a difficult, uh, I know that's a really, really popular sport at um, Hampstead Middle School too. Yeah. So I'm, I'm disappointed, uh, but uh, we'll see. You know, sometimes you have a meeting like this and somebody comes out of the woodwork for tomorrow. Who knows, right? Yep. Um, I have one other question I want to bring up, but I want to ask if any other board members have additional questions on anything for the reopening. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody. So my question is actually, I'm coming back to the tenth. Um, do you need a vote from us on this to be able to allocate funds anywhere? I think we'd uh, we'd appreciate one. Just um, it's a mm -hmm. symbolic show of support, but it's also I think uh, I'm not sure if Mike needs to move money um, from another line to support this, or if we have some funds. I'm not sure. Uh, that was that yeah. was going to be a Jeff. That's. Yeah. Jeff had started to evaluate that, that, but we were going to wait for uh, the meeting tonight to see which way to proceed. If that's something that you're interested in moving forward on, um, you could, if it's something that you're okay with us waiving bid policy for, or you're okay waiving bid policy, perhaps you could do a motion that would allow, um, allow that, allow a waiver of bid policy and allow uh, me to be able to reallocate funds um, in order to um, satisfy the obligation. Okay. Um, do we need to put a number to it? I did quick math and I was at about 14,000. If we do 
the two 40 by 40, the one 40 by 20, and then walls. I don't know if anybody else checks that. No, that's out. good quick math. I think it was like 13, I think it was 13959 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Jeff, so should we put a number to this, or do you want just the motion to? Is it better to just have the motion be to reallocate funds as needed? That'd be great. Yep. Okay. Um, so let's put forward a motion. We can talk about it if anybody wants to talk about doing this. But I would be looking for a motion to waive bid policy and to reallocate funds as needed for tent rentals for the period of mid-September to through the end of November. So move. Second. Okay. Any discussion or questions on this from anybody? Okay. I'm not seeing any, so. Um, Melissa, will you please call a roll vote? Wait a minute. Caitlin? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I was muted. Um, I just. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Karen. Yeah, I just have. Um, I think you touched on it before, um, and I just want to make sure that considerations been giving uh, enough considerations been given to security. I, mean, I think that if they're in the courtyards, I think that answers the question. But I think if they're going to be put out somewhere outside of the school building, on a field or something. Um, I would just like to know that that's been considered and how that's going to be handled since security has been such a big part of this board up to this point. Um, yeah, Caitlin, if I could, I, I yeah, think, um, you know, that was ahead. really, um, again, we, we don't want to take you know, hypocritical standpoints on things. You know, our safety is, has always been the most important. Um, this is a safe learning plan. Uh, Mike can talk a little bit about location. Um, I know that locations seem pretty good. We, we obviously weren't going to discuss, um, and, and not that anybody's asked me to, but uh, that, you know, how we're going to use them in terms of um, security, in terms of safety. Um, but um, we, we have spent quite a bit of time um, looking at that, making sure that they're used. Uh, if, we, if we end up using them, obviously, during the school day at all, uh, to make sure that 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 safety and security is is solid. So, uh, Mike, you want to talk a little bit about location? Um, so at least at least the board has an idea where they're going. Yep. Um, so it was important, obviously, as Mrs. Jusinka mentioned, uh, courtyard was our first avenue. That is obviously the, the safest avenue for in school uh, outdoor learning. Uh, and then once we brainstormed about inside the courtyard, um, we then obviously shifted to outside. And I, I want to tread lightly on the planning and preparation uh, yeah, because I of. I don't want yes, details. My question, okay. was, my question was, can be answered in a yes or no. The, the question was simply, has it been considered? Have the people involved in our security process up to this point, have they been involved and considered um, the placement and care of, of the, um, the tents? That's all. I, I would say it was our number one priority when beginning this avenue of, of, of thought. Okay. And it, it, it continued to be at the forefront of placement, location, uh, times, things like that. So okay. that's all I wanted. It, to, okay. I just wanted to be you know, sure that it had been talked about and considered. That's all. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Anyone else? questions or comments to discuss on the motion? Okay, seeing, hearing none. Melissa, will you please call the vote? Ms. Malcolm? Yes. Mrs. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. Mrs. Yosenka? Yes. Thank you, motion carries. Caitlin, I just wanted to okay, just, thank just you. quickly, um, you know, when I, I, when I mentioned Dr. F uh, Fauci and, and vaccine, you know, there's the highly effective versus, you know, a, a vaccine that's going to be 100%. I think um, I, that's the big debate. 
I think so. I, I don't want anybody to think that I thought there was going to be a vaccine in the next month or so, but uh, you know, there, there is some debate over, over him settling for what he thinks is something that's highly effective um, versus not. So, um, but I do, I do, I am willing, I'm acknowledging though, that I think for some of our families without a vaccine, that's going to be the defining moment for them or point for them. Um, and that's why I, I just, all I want you to take from this is that that's going to direct us because I, we already were acknowledging that that's going to direct us to make sure that choice is an option, right? That there is an option um, to stay remote somehow, some way. We just don't know what that's going to look like yet until we're able to determine how many people want that option and then how many staff members will have to, to, um, to staff that option, right? What we're trying to not do is ask staff to do two things at once. Like we would never ask a, a staff member to stand between two rooms and teach two classes at the same time. We certainly wouldn't ask them to do, um, that's gonna require, um, uh, you know, 100% of their time and energy on one or the other when we get to that point. So um, I just wanted to make that point. So thanks, I just didn't wanna leave people to think I thought there was a vaccine coming. Okay, thank you, Dr. Metzler. <laughs> And it, I did not get texted. I, it was your facial expression that made me read it. <laughs> how that was being. Um, we all know paid. how we all know how good my poker face is. <laughs> well. Okay. Um, anything else for the update on the beginning of school? I think just going back to what my question was before, Caitlin, about you know the twenty second. There is a long period between the 22nd and the 13th to really understand what's going to be happening. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we come back on the 13th and we're talking about whatever that next phase may or may not happen. And then the parent, and I believe the last time we talked about this, it would be uh, from Monday the 18th is when it would be, when, whatever that next phase would be or something like that, if I remember one of the last presentations. So I'm just wondering what's the best way to go about this between now, the 22nd, and then a long period of time between if we don't know what the next step is. I just feel that it's a really short time to plan for teachers, administration to say, are we going to have enough teachers or not? Get that feedback. Are, you know, what students are coming back, which ones aren't, um, and then how to really support the entire uh, process. I think it sounds like a very tight, tight time frame if, um, if we wait. Well, I don't think we were, I don't think we had a committed date that we were going to absolutely go to the next phase. I mean, we were talking about consideration of it. I'm not saying it wouldn't happen then. I'm just saying if, and maybe I'm remembering this incorrectly, but I don't think we ever said on October 18th, we're going to phase two. Okay, well, let's, 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 let's look at this, right? So we have work sessions planned for both the 6th and the 20th, right? So yep. in the event that it requires us to do something, we could post this and do a, you know, a short kind of, COVID-19 response or, or phase one response, phase two, like we could, we could literally do something with this on each one of those dates. It's every Tuesday, really, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, um, I mean, we can always schedule, you know, if it seems like that's too far with no information, essentially, if we're talking about the 22nd to the 13th, um, you're right, we do have a work session scheduled on the 6th for the budget. Um, and we, I mean, we could grab an hour there. I mean, um, mm -hmm. if something needs to change, I'm, I'm going to be asking you for a meeting anyway. You know, we, we'd be looking to, to, for the board right. support. Uh, so in any event, we could post those and, and we could do an update, really, at each one of those. I mean, that could be a weekly update. Um, we, need, mm -hmm. we need a little bit of time to get started. So you go from the 14th to the 22nd, right. that makes sense. You know? So I was just asking, I was going to ask the other board members if anybody else is feeling that way, same way, that it seems just like a really tight, but, you know, whatever, you know, collectively you think. Well, time goes, the time goes quick. It, it does, right. it does feel, it does feel tight to all of us, you know, in terms of, um, especially when you're going to make, you're trying to make change on the fly and you're not sure what it's going to look like six weeks from now or eight weeks from now, but, um, uh, I'm not suggesting we nece necessarily need to do it every week, but we do have those dates um, that we could use uh, an hour of that time before or after the session, the budgets, the work session, if needed. Uh, your call. I mean, I didn't mean to interrupt any other board members, but if, it, if board members had feelings about the, uh, the tightness of the schedule. I mean, I think considering 
I mean, obviously this is the most important thing we're all dealing with at this point. Um, I think maybe it does make sense to do some sort of update, um, post it as a special meeting or something on the 6th um, with the anticipation that on the 6th, maybe we have some additional feedback. Dr. Messler, as you had mentioned on like vague numbers or some more numbers about who would be interested, who would be okay coming back, who would be staying remote. I just, I have a hard time getting that number for the 22nd. I think that's a hard call to make uh, for anybody being asked the question. Um, but yes, the 13th seems further out. Um, what I, what I, like I don't about, have a problem with. Well, what I like about those numbers, um, especially when they, if we're, we're taking them at periods in time and, and, they, and they're, they're getting better, right? On this date, it looked this way. On this date, we, more people felt comfortable. It just, you just see a trend kind of thing. So, um, but yeah, we're, we're wide open. I mean, if it, it, here's, a, here's the question you have, right? So if this is about the board having information, I'm going to continually keep you updated like I have been. Um, if this is more about a public presentation so that the public has all the information, right? It's, those are two different questions, right? So the board, I'll, I will keep you posted where we are, what, how people feel, what would, you know, all those kinds of things informally mm -hmm. along the way. But if it's a formal presentation so that the public can stay up to, to speed, uh, the public's going to want to know. And so um, we're not going to surprise them on a Monday and say, tomorrow we're doing this. Um, we're certainly going to give people enough notice so that they can plan um, their family's life and work schedule and uh, around um, what the school options are. So. You know, that would, that we would have a work session anyways. I mean, why don't we just throw another meeting in on the 6th? It can be short. I mean, it can be just based on, around the... We need a formal name for these. Safe Learning. Well, I guess Safe Learning is our official yes. name. Yeah, Safe Learning Plan. I mean, and, the, and there's the 29th. So, I mean, there's there's dates there. Um, and so we will, if there's something to be that we need to work on, is it something that requires action or something that we need to be for the public, uh, we can we can call a meeting and either add it to one of the work sessions mm -hmm. or add it on one of the other days, right? Because I, yeah. I think maybe we'll know a lot by the 29th of, of September. Um, so maybe we're, I don't know. That's the thing is it's such an unknown about what our next, you know, we have, potential moves, what our next moves might be, but it's not in stone. So, um, mm -hmm. but it might be by then, right? You hope. I mean, I, I'm going to propose the six. What do other board members think about adding a update, uh, you know, whatever uh, for the six? Sounds good to me. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So just to be clear, so we'll post Any, it as a school board meeting, safe learning update. And then we'll go, yeah. well, the, the, was, the work session is not public though. So we would break from the, the meeting would end and then we'd go. Right. Work. So I'm, I guess we need to figure out um, which comes first. Um, I think ideally we'd want the meeting to come before the work session because the work session could go longer. I mean, we never know how long budget workshops are gonna go. Um, in which case I would propose, sorry, did I cut in, somebody off? No, I, it, under, it would take an hour, no more than an hour, 30 minutes. For 30, the update. Yeah, for the update. And then, then we go into the yeah, work session. Yeah. So what if we, um, board members, are you good with a six o'clock start for the update meeting? And then we can go into the work session. I'm not hearing objections, so I'm going to go with, okay. All right, Melissa, if you can set that up and notice it. So we'll do a board meeting with a safe learning update on the 6th. That's kind of an interim between the, the regular meeting, and then we'll go into work session afterwards for the budget. Okay. Works for me. Anything else on this item before we move on? Okay. Uh, next up, we want to talk about our last meeting. We started talking about 
if when in person board meetings resume. Um, Dr. Messer, I believe we asked um, you guys to kind of look into what it would take to do that. Um, we had been talking about probably looking at the middle school cafeteria um, as an option for space. I don't know if you have any update for us on that. Yeah, I asked um, Mike to, to take a look at that with, with technology. So he has a quick, um, a quick. Yeah, uh, to, yes. Um, so the, the, the challenge is that, so I reached out to a couple other um, areas that I'll say that are, are Zooming and being in person at the same time. And to be honest, it's been really challenging on the quality of meeting they've been able to hold. Um, example, okay. if, if Dr. Metzler and I and you are in the middle school cafeteria Zooming, whether it be on one device, two devices, or however, and then you have other participants uh, Zooming outside of there, they've been running into some challenges in regards to um, it being a visually um, I don't, I don't use, like to use the word attractive, but it's, it's been challenging through the visual component, but also on the audio component. Now, they have figured out ways to do it. More specifically, I, I know I spoke with Mr. Dowd earlier today. He can share some of his experiences and actually with the town itself. Um, so shorter answer is we can, we can make it happen. The other part of the equation is most people that I've talked to Zooming part in person and part um, not in person has been a challenge to hold, I guess the easiest way is to hold a, a good meeting. Mr. Dow, do you want to speak to that? I just think you have a good experience with that. Well, I don't know if I'd call it a good experience, Mr. Yeah. Clinton. Thank you. Sorry. So I, I am on the, I'm uh, chairman of the zoning board and our board locally has been meeting um, in that type of hybrid format. And, and really it's not, it's not the most desirable. Uh, myself and one other board member have been largely remote and uh, of course the videos are available online. Um, what we run into is that that when you have someone on Zoom that that audio can get picked up um, on the microphones of the folks who are actually sitting in the room and you can have some some quality issues there. Folks who are in the room the, uh, theoretically would be wearing masks for example if you if you all meet were meeting in a room you, you may be wearing masks. That muffles the sound to a degree. Um, it, it is challenging for us, I think, on the zoning board to look at what we have for um, folks looking to participate. So if we have someone who's looking to participate, what's their level of comfort participating in Zoom from home uh, versus coming into the meeting? There had been some, I think, some, some issues there. In fact, at our last meeting, we had had a, a, a case that was heard initially and there was some confusion on the part, I think, of the applicant because it was one of our first Zoom meetings and there was some uncertainty as to whether some of her abutters could, could come and speak in person or if they could speak on Zoom, if that could be arranged. And the, when the applicant is in the room, and if actually, if, if, you, if you know the, 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 the selectman's room, we sit on the planning board side. The monitor that you all look at um, is essentially turned toward the um, toward that planning board table, and so there's a little bit of a proximity issue because I can't be too close. I'm on that monitor, and I can't be too close to the to the board itself because my audio will get picked up. So it was really distracting for applicants to mm -hmm. have, you know, to have have me speaking behind, essentially behind them, and have members of the board um, speaking in front of them, if you will. Um, so it gets a little dodgy, it gets a little tricky, and it really is not the best format. I think in our situation, I have four to five members of the board a lot of times in the room and a lot of times, in fact, as chairman, if my vice chair is there, I will, I will just defer to him and ask him to run the meeting in the room. And if, I'm, if we have enough people a lot of times in the, in the room, I will, I will simply recuse myself from the hearing and allow other people to, to hear the matter, especially if it's a complex or complicated um, hearing. Um, the only real good thing that has come about um, is that we don't have and have not done in the past the live feed that the school board uh, does for um, the computer um, itself or the laptop that we usually have in the room so you can see PowerPoint presentations and all that. I've been able to actually adapt um, Zoom and adapt applications now so that I can take a picture of them and actually show them screen share on Zoom. That literally has been a, a big improvement. That is the only 
um, good thing about it, it's rocky, it's, it's, it's not clear, and our town has worked very, 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 very hard to try and balance everything out. It's not clean. And I think that the number one thing that, that our viewing public uh, and our taxpayers and our parents um, really would want to be, uh, have the benefit of is a good, clear uh, communication between the board, among members, presenters, um, and that sort of thing. And I will, I will tell you as well that there may be another school board that, that I have um, interactions with and they did not opt for, they had an in-person meeting, but did not opt for the, uh, the Zoom hybrid type, type setting. So I had to call into that meeting and I was not able to go to the meeting in person. I had to call into that meeting and it was one of these deals that I was calling in and, and I was being held up on someone's cell phone um, up to a microphone um, where the meeting was being live streamed. So if you have any members of the board yourself who wouldn't be able to go to the meeting, if you do a Zoom, that Zoom platform, it gets dodgy, it gets tricky, you're in different places in the room. And if you don't do Zoom and you just do all in person, then that gets even more dodgy mm -hmm. if you don't have people who are going to be in the room uh, who are not able to be there, they would then have to call in. And that really has not historically proven to be a great outcome. So I'll put it out there. That's my, my real world experience, I guess, both with the, with the hybrid from a public meeting perspective of doing Zoom and in-person and from having trying to have an in-person meeting. Um, and if you wanted to check out that, that other um, school board's meeting, I don't know if it's posted or not, but I know that, that their ability to communicate with everyone in the room, no Zoom, with everyone in the room was difficult and hampered because they were sitting so far apart from each other, socially distanced, and they all had um, masks on, which made it really difficult to, to project into a microphone and that sort of thing. For whatever reason, it seems to be a little easier. I think when you're in like a classroom type setting, but it just didn't pick up well on, on the video. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Certainly. I don't know, board members thoughts, discussions. I know we're trying to do this. I'm just trying to figure out how or when to make it work. I don't think we should do in-person meetings. We are remote at school. Why would we go into the school? So if, if, if you guys decide to do them, I will be doing them remotely. That was another question. So like connected to kind of what you just said, Jim, about if we do go in person, I think the other thing we were sort of asking or ruminating on when we were talking about this at the last meeting was how do you split if not everybody's comfortable? How do you, um, additionally, are we going to be putting a burden on our staff at the school involving cleaning? Because I would imagine the cafeteria would have to be cleaned before we went in and then would have to be cleaned again when we left. Right. And it's is, not just us. I mean, with, right? Right, it's, right. You know, it's Dr. Metzler, it's Mike Flynn, mm -hmm. it's technology, it's the janitors, mm -hmm. it's Dillard, it's Maria, it's, 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 it's everybody. Um, I, we're, we're remote now, I don't even think we should be talking about this. Yeah, Caitlin, I agree. Um, if the board opts to go to in-person, um, I'm not comfortable doing that for a number of reasons. And I would participate um, through Zoom only. Um, that's, that's my input for that. Um, but also it's, it's not really, um, I, don't think, I don't think it's feasible. I mean, it's not just the five of us, Russell, where we're gonna meet. It's just what w w was touched right. on. You know, I, I did a count and it looks like 17, you know, a minimum, upward of 17 people could possibly be there. Five school board members, Dr. Metzler, Mr. Dowd, Melissa, the two principals. Um, if we have anyone else there, you know, Mr. Flynn, anyone else who has, has to speak or present has to be there. Custodians have to be there cleaning not only that room, but then the two bathrooms that have to be open. Mm -hmm. um, and you have members of the public, the media, you would have members of the public coming in and having to space them out. We don't know how many would be there. Um, so I don't, I don't really think that that's a good idea at this time. Um, if the thought was 
you know, we, we should be setting um, a model. You know, should take the lead. Well, the model is we're doing remote right now. So to do remote, we are being the role model for remote. On the other hand, if we're doing it because we feel that the public may want to come and have more public input, then I think it's incumbent upon us to continue what we're doing, but find a way, while you tech people out there, find a way that if someone from the public wants to make a comment during Zoom, they can. That's, that's just my feeling. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, but that's also a part of this, even though like it's kind of the in-person discussion, there's also the, you know, the, the desire to do it in person does have a factor with this whole giving people the opportunity for public comment. Um, you know, we sort of touched on that again. If it wasn't the last meeting, it was the one before, but I think it was the last meeting. Um, last meeting. Um, I kind of think with the logistical issues and also, you know, what, what Mr. Dowd has mentioned with his experience, um, because Zoom isn't just like, okay, we can put up one computer 15 feet away from all of us so we can be all on screen. Um, there's audio issues with that and everything else. It's not the same as just like live cable, um, which we've done in the past. So I, I do think there are some challenges here that, um, as Mr. Flynn mentioned, aren't insurmountable. It can be done, but I, you know, frankly, people, we have a lot more people attending these meetings on Zoom than we do in person. Um, and if we were to switch solely to in person, because it doesn't seem like Zoom's a great avenue for a large gathering in person or large whatever, um, we, that would mean we're going back to cable, which actually gives people, frankly, at this point, less access than in the past for a live broadcast, because just not as many people have cable anymore. We have a lot more people streaming. Um, so I have to say, I don't think in-person is, is the right direction for me right now either, just from hearing the challenges. Um, but I think maybe let's talk a little bit more about the comments and a, and a way to do that. Um, I know this kind of bring. Oh, yeah, David, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I guess I, I'm just kind of confused on this. We are in remote. I get that. But we're also planning for the next phase. So I'm not sure why we're not planning for us to go back in person like we're trying to plan for our students, our teachers also. Other school districts are going back in person. Other school boards are doing this in person. I understand Hampstead's special, but I don't feel that we're that special that we can't be overcoming these challenges. I'm not saying we should be going back in person today. I know we're remote today. I know, but going back hybrid or phase three in the next, let's call it six weeks, I think we should also be planning on how we're gonna go back to the way it was, but with modifications in the next six weeks or four weeks or eight weeks. And I do think it's about public comments. I do think it's about leading um, the charge. I do think we should be setting the stage for our, our teachers, our admins, to, to you back to Dr. Mesla's point, they're looking for some sort of comfortableness in this, to be comforted in this. And I think that us leading that charge helps with that comfort. Us continuing to say, we're not gonna meet in, pu in public together. I don't think that helps. I think that just continues to exasperate this. So, so I, 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 I do think this is a different conversation. You. Sorry, go ahead. I just think it's a different conversation than a classroom meeting in person. Because the classroom, if they're then deciding to meet in person, does not have to then broadcast out their meeting. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm listening to the tech roadblocks. They're not insurmountable. I understand that. But, I mean, it, it seems like a inferior product if we're talking about the meeting um if we're if we're in person some people are in person some people aren't in person trying to zoom out the meeting so that people can still access it in real time if they don't have cable um i don't know caitlin essentially um what we're talking about is live stream right live stream equipment yes 
That's right. But about. we've had discussions about live stream before that it's expensive. Yeah, super expensive. But it's um, that is the best way to do to to stream out a, a meeting, right? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think if we were to have meetings in person, and we don't believe the cable is the the right way, that that's really our option. I, I the Zoom thing, I think is it can be messy. I don't I don't disagree with what Dave's saying. I, I mean, just people aren't ready yet. But um, we we should. I guess we we are we are planning. So we'd be planning for this, just like we're planning for whatever our next phase. So we should maybe be looking at our board meetings in phases. What's the next phase, right? Um, it's not, if we're not ready for the 22nd, I don't think anybody's banging the drum. We have to have it ready for the 22nd, but you know, what's October gonna look like? We don't really know yet, but we, but I think at a minimum we should be planning for how do we get back to, uh, to, the nor to whatever the new normal is, right? Um, mm -hmm. We could price out live stream equipment for you just so you can find out what it would cost for a, you know, a small operation uh, for that. And um, I mean, we could look at all that. We could look at the options. And I'm not saying that that we'd recommend that option. It might be too too costly, but we can look at the different um, technology um, options we would have. Uh, I don't think I'm with everybody else. I don't think we want um, a whole bunch of people jammed into a room. Um, but uh, if we were all spread out, could we do something? I, I don't. I just don't know. Other than a live stream, what would make the most sense um, from a broadcast broadcast quality issue? I guess right. I don't want to put out an inferior product that um, that people can't hear or don't understand, and it, it it just is a that's just a poorer form of communication and not communicating at all, really, because it sort of reaches people's frustration levels. So, uh, but we should be planning. So. Would that be the directive for us to, to, to look at what the next phase for this would be at some point? We're not committing to a date, but at some point in the near future? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's incumbent on you guys just for planning, though. I mean, the board has to decide. And, and this may be a discussion we have to have kind of ongoing, and maybe each board member communicates to the other board members about just like we're asking teachers and families what, when their comfort is there um, or what needs to be there for their comfort level to be in person, um, I can reach out to board members and determine the same thing, which might be the next step. And that's what I'm thinking. But I, I think pricing out live streaming, let's, let's go ahead and do it. Um, at least it gives us something to have in mind and try to be able to figure that out. So yep. if you could do that, I am, oh, go ahead, Mike. No, I was gonna say not a problem. I'll work on that and, and, and bring back prices for review. Okay, I am gonna um, say that should be low on your priority list as we lead up to school. Clearly that should not be taking your time away from the start of school stuff or anything else. So. Um, not that we don't want it, I'm just saying you don't need to do it first thing tomorrow morning. I appreciate that. I'll go there. My, li my list yeah. all runs together right now. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, well, okay, well, one thing. I just want to say something. I know the, the word role model was used. Um, for some parents, I, I, we're failing, right? Because they don't believe in COVID and they would want their kids to go back to school immediately full time. They don't, they, they don't understand this exercise we're doing. So it really depends what view you're talking about. Um, so some kids won't go back to school for the whole year, maybe, if that's what their parents don't want. And who knows about a vaccine if it will happen next year. I'm not trying to, you know, say the, the, the sky's falling, but role model really depends on what you're talking about. And just like what you said, you know, we're going to talk about the teachers and parents, what they're comfortable with. It's the same thing about the board. So you could, you know, this could be in June and, and a board member still might not want to come into the, the meeting and that's okay. You know, we don't know what the mm -hmm. future is going to be like. So um, I, I just wanted to, to say that we were talking about role models, but it, it really depends. Some parents would say you're crazy to go back to school board meetings for the whole year or until after a vaccine. I don't know, but it, it, it's all personal preference. No, I agree. And there, there is an aspect of that. Um, actually, as, as you said, 
about teachers and students. Um, I will also, if I'm going to reach out to board members, I'm also going to reach out to administrators who need to be at our meetings and find um, their comfort level as well. So um, that's something I will do and communicate out. Um, right. And Dr. Metzler, to everybody. Everybody. the new normal, right? The new normal is happening all over the world. Companies are relooking at office space and some people are staying remote. I mean, I do my job remotely. Mm -hmm. I, do, I can do it on the moon if I had internet service. So, I mean, I'm not, a, we're not trial lawyers where I need to read your face, you know? Um, some people uh, on Zoom don't show their picture um, and that's okay. Um, so I don't, you know, we don't have to rush into school board meetings online. And when we do, we just need to provide options like we're doing to uh, parents and children. That's all. Thank you, Jim. Um, do we want to, okay, so knowing we're going to, we're going to gather some more information, we're going to figure out what our plan is, um, just like the schools are, let's, let's not, um, you know, we, we still need to talk about the, the public comments. So we started to talk about it, you know, we were kind of putting some ideas, sort of brainstorming out about, um, do they, if someone wants to make a public comment, do they, um, you know, email Melissa to get on the list. Um, Mike, I know you had mentioned that when we talked about this before, the whole finding somebody and and unmuting them um, is a little bit tricky. I can't remember if that was when we were in the previous Zoom format or if it was after we moved to the webinar format. Is there any difference with how we are now? Yes, the webinar format would allow for easier opportunity if we were prepared ahead of time. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So here's what I'm going to propose then. What if we set in place um, that anyone interested in public comments would have to email Melissa. We need to set a cutoff time because I don't want her to have to be sorting through names at, you know, quarter of seven before a meeting, she gives those names to Mike Flynn. So he has the list. Um, and then as long as he can identify the person on the Zoom meeting, we can go ahead and do public comments. Now, that being said, I know not everyone puts their full meet name up when they sign into these meetings, so this would be out to the public. If you're interested in a public comment, you need to put your full name because we're not it, I, muting people and unmuting people and guessing and whatever. Um, you know, we, we want to give everyone an opportunity for public comments, but we need to do it in a way that we can efficiently get through it. Um, and, you know, I, I'm sure if we choose to do this and we open it up, um, you know, maybe that first meeting we are going to have a lot of people interested. I feel like we should do a little refresher on what public comments are meant for. Um, for one, that we do ask that you keep it to three minutes. Um, in addition, if you come and you want to do a public comment, um, please remember that it's public. So, you know, um, speak in a way that makes sense for a public meeting. And in addition, if you pose a question to the board, we can't answer it right then. Public comments, if, if there's a question posed or a request made, we have to then be able to put it as an agenda item on a future meeting. So um, it might be better to email someone directly if you have a question. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to do that quick um, piece for anyone who might be interested in public comments. Um, you know, there is kind of a setup for it. So I don't know for other board members. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? And additionally, Melissa, I'd like you as part of this, my, Melissa and Mike, um, if you think, I know it's additional things to do. Um, I just want to know if it's feasible basically as I suggested it. Well, 
the first thing I'm, you're going to have to maybe do a little one or two paragraph tutorial in your announcement about meetings about how to put your name on there. Some people just click the link and they don't oh. use Zoom. You know, I know True. this is extra effort, but um, I think people should be able to make comments. The other thing about mm -hmm. this is I want people to own their comments. When people, there's a lot of mm -hmm. keyboard warriors out there and I'm not dissing anybody that, that types an email. I'm, I'm, I'm dissing people that say stuff that's not appropriate. And in the four years I've been on the board, I have hardly, maybe, I don't know, less than three people that ever came to a school board meeting that said something. Um, so I want people to own their comments. And like you said, Caitlin, this is a public forum and it will be out there and people will hear it. So, you know, think before you say something that's um, out of line for a public forum. We've seen a lot of it through email and maybe we could um, get rid of some of it if people have to, uh, uh, um, be online and put their name up. Be better if they could put the video up too. And another thing I wanted to say is they need to say what they would say in a public meeting. They're from Hampstead. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, are we going to verify they're from Hampstead? So that is the other part. I mean, usually at a public meeting, you need to state your name and you need to state your address so that you know, we can verify that you're a resident. Um, so I don't want to make this like super, super complicated, but I would say you would need to provide your name um, and your address in the communication that is sent to Melissa to get on the list. Um, right. You know, making people put their video on, I'm a little iffy about that because we don't make other people, but they're, yeah, right. So no, you're right. Um, you're right. I wouldn't want them to do anything different than they would have to do. Like we're not going to do background checks on their yeah. address. Just the, no, 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 no. It's a public record though, as well. I mean, that's the thing. Um, right. There's a public record aspect of this. So right. um, I don't know. Anybody else have thoughts on this or yay or nay or whatever? No. No comment. Okay. I think it's pretty straightforward. You know, what you put out there. Uh, I think the public would provide their comments, however they're going to do it, and that's part of public comments. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to kind of one. Melissa, are you okay with this? Yes, uh, thank you for asking me. Um, yeah, I'm okay with this. I think that I would have to work with Mr. Flynn just to figure out the logistics mm -hmm. of, you know, how to make it happen properly. And, you know, Madam Chair, you're right. It is a, a matter of record from the person making the public comment. So I'm trying to think back to the last time we had someone actually make a public comment in person. It's been a while, but someone does read yeah. into the record the person's name and the address, and I believe that would be you. So we'd had the, we had those paper forms that the individual yeah. fill out, and I would hand it to you mm -hmm. before we got to that section. So you would introduce the person, state their name and their residence, their address. Mm -hmm. So maybe I could work with Mr. Flynn on doing some kind of a Google form or something, just so we get that information to me properly on time, and then I could return it. Yeah, email. that's a great idea. Yeah, so I could I could work with him on that. I think it's definitely doable on my part anyway. Okay. Okay. Um, I think a Google form is a great idea rather than just an email that that may just, you know, obviously we all use email all day long. Stuff gets lost. Um, hey, I'm sorry. Would you set a limit? No, go ahead, Jim. Would you set a limit on the amount of people? Because it's so much easier to to go on Zoom. You don't have to get up and drive to the town hall and and wait, you know, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying I want to limit people, but you know, we can't spend all night. I mean, look where we are right now. It's nine Oh five and we're not even I know. like anywhere near where we're supposed I to, know. you know, I mean? know. Um, I was just wondering, I like, don't know that we, yeah, I don't know if we can see, we've never run into the issue of having 
too many public comments because generally we don't have any. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I don't, I need to look into whether we can, like whether we can have a number cut off through like the RSAs and everything that, that govern our meetings. Can we have any sort of cut off? I mean, I know we have a policy of three minutes, so that is what it is. Um, but you're right. It's easier to participate from home and just jump on the computer. Um, I think I need to look into that. I was just wondering, that's all. No, but it's a really good point. It is a really good point. So, so um, okay. I'm just going to write myself a note. Okay, I'll look into that. I'll work with Melissa and Mike um, to get this going and hopefully have it ready for the 22nd. That would be my thought. Um, we're gonna have to find a way to get the information out. Melissa, when the posting goes out, is there a way we could add like you know, a, a little paragraph about if you are interested in providing a public comment, like something like that. I'm trying to figure out how to get the information out, like how to direct them to the right, like like if we set up a Google form. You know what? How about you and I just talk about this? Okay. <laughs> I can email you tomorrow because Jim's right. We are getting long on time. And basically what I'm hearing is we're, we have a general consensus to move ahead and try to figure out um, try to confirm how to do public comments. Um, so let's, we'll figure it out. We'll work it out and figure out how to get the information out there. Yes, that sounds good to me. And the short answer is yes, we can. <laughs> we can do this. Okay. Okay. All right. We're going to make this work. Okay. Thank you. Um, so the next item is the 2020 uh, school board goals discussion. This is something we usually are starting on in August um, with everything else going on. We haven't done it yet. Um, so what I'd like to suggest is, because I don't think any of us are prepped for this right now, um, I will send out to everyone the goals from last year that we put together so that everybody has in front of them what um, we worked on last year because sometimes we do take them and carry them over if it's something we still want to focus on um, or we look at new ones. And what I'm going to ask is board members be prepared for the meeting on the 22nd to talk about um, board goals. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah, sounds good. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, Melissa, if you could add that to the agenda for the 22nd. Will do. Thank you. Okay. Um, next is the 2021-2022 budget process, process discussion. Dr. Metzler, you're going to bring us through this a bit. In your packets, you'll notice there's a 2021-2022 um, budget development for Hampstead School District. You, you all see that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So, um, you know, we have a, a time frame there. This is pretty much, um, you know, annually how we, how we go about this. Um, you know, first, you know, right out in October, working on personnel costs, contract costs, staffing, non-union personnel, personnel and benefits, uh, one-time expenses in the previous budget. Um, the budget work session on October 20th, that'll be time where de uh, department heads and principals meet with their respective board liaisons in order to review the details of the budget. Um, we'll provide information such as enrollments, anticipated drivers for costs, board members will identify uh, any questions um, or items that may need follow-up. Then on the 27th, we'll have a meeting used to summarize the school department budgets and presentation explanations to the board. Uh, it's a 15 minute presentation and 15 minutes for questions, comments, and follow-up. Then on November 10th, uh, we have a regular board meeting for any budget uh, revisions as needed. 24th, another regular school board meeting will include the district budget items from uh, Mr. Dowd. December 8th, we hope you approve the final budget and warrant articles. And then the dates that are still in review with RSA statute, some of these are tentative, January 12th, um, 
if you take a look at, uh, you know, that, that calendar still really needs to be put together um, for, um, you know, if we have any special warrant articles and, or any of those sorts of things. Um, and it gives you those dates, January 25th, that's Monday, warrant must be posted by this day. The 2nd of February, that's the first deliberative session. Uh, full H team will be present, myself, Mr. Dowd, uh, and the architects. And then uh, March 9th, uh, that's the, the actual voting day. So um, I don't know, Jeff, if you wanted to add anything um, to that. I think that, that uh, pretty much summarizes uh, our budget planning process. And certainly this is a very challenging year, I believe from um, the perspective of all of our principals and directors and in, in trying to plan their budgets and determine what their needs are next year. And so as a board, I'm sure that you'll be able to um, get your priorities um, to administration or to the directors and we can in turn um, get those worked into the budget. Because again, it's a very challenging year, I think in terms of that development process and strategy based on well, where we are, so. Okay. Um, I mean, the dates look good to me. I think that's all we need right now. Right? Yes, I think so. Okay, moving along. Um, next up is the Central School Construction Renovation Project Planning. David, I believe you're going to talk to us about this. Yes, Megan and I have met a bunch of times and uh, discussed some of the strategy going forward. So we want to present that to the board and then uh, get a vote on whether or not we proceed. Um, Mike, I should be able to share my screen, correct? Yep. I just okay, co host. All right, thank you. All right, just let me know when uh, you can see. Yep. All right. Yep. All right. So for the renovation project, uh, as discussed in the last time, we are to come together uh, to talk about what is the strategy, give timeline next steps, and then board actions around um, if we'll proceed or not. Um, let's see. You will hear the strategy we want to move forward with. Um, I think it gives enough detail um, and certainly want to hear feedback in a moment. We do have a timeline of pretty much every month, some uh, bigger topics that uh, Megan and I will be looking to accomplish. Uh, which includes having the community, administration, teachers, um, part of this uh, from now until March. And then of course the board action with associated cost uh, by working with Trident to make some updates and review of plans to ensure that we are um, good with regulations as well as some modifications we, we know we wanna make as we talked about with the SAU. So without further ado, let's go to the next slide here. Okay, so here's the strategy that we're talking about doing splitting this up into two ways. Um, and really the strategy is we want to minimize the amount of uh, uh, budget request um, that's going to be on the warrant article. Oops, I put March 2020. I meant to change that to 21. There we go. Change on the fly. Um, the first one is 60s wing renovations. We've all agreed and talked about in the past that that is our priority. So what we want to do with the 60s wing uh, renovation is not even put that on the warrant. We want to plan that next year um, in the 2021 to 2022 budget um, that we utilize whatever we have for capital reserve fund and whatever we need for the balance to take care of the 60s wing. We challenge the budget uh, for 2021-2022 uh, to have um, whatever is needed for the 60s wing um, and try to challenge that we have a minimal increase to the 2020-2021 uh, budget. So we're not looking to add another one point whatever million. We're trying to absorb that in there. We talked about challenging the budget last year. Uh, we didn't move forward with that uh, due to other reasons. Uh, so we wanna take that same strategy, move it forward into next year. Um, and as uh, Mr. Dow's already submitted on our behalf, uh, submit to the state reimbursement uh, that we have that possibility for up to 35% on um, the 60s wing uh, renovation. In parallel of that, for the non 90s, 60s wing. Um, we wanna work with Trident to review, update and scrub cost needs that will be part of that warrant. We wanna review with the administration if any areas are recommended to be potentially be phased in future budgets. So maybe we say, hey, we can move that to a couple of years out or potentially a few years out. So we wanna work with, see if there's anything else we can uh, reduce that warrant. Um, and then of course submit as a second uh, plan to the state for reimbursement of that 35%. And then for that, you know, for, you know, the audience, the 
community that's online right now and uh, board members, there are about 11 areas um, that are part of that non-60 non wing um, planning that have been in the past. And I put this here just as a reminder for anybody who's asking, well, what else is not in the 60s wing? Uh, we do have classrooms being remodeled. We have classroom additions. We have a secured entryway. We are looking at having a different um, area for the nurse. We are looking at having a dedicated music room, moving the library, having a different area for the administration. We are looking for fire protection, creating a closed courtyard. So we're closing the school essentially there, um, having a gymnasium renovation, as well as the additional uh, looking at having the SAU administration uh, to be on the central school facilities. So I'll stop here on the strategy. Any questions on this? the next slide timeline I'm not going to go into all these steps but you can see that uh, Megan and I we we have put together uh, a number of areas of focus we do and we'll continue to explore the project plan around this for ourselves uh, of milestones we want to hit I think the uh, the main area and Megan I definitely would love uh, for your input here but the main areas here are uh, working with administration and teachers working with community leaders um, getting that renovation committee um, up and running no later than October, uh, continue to work with the community, uh, education, outreaches, whatever it's gonna take uh, for the next uh, six months or so. Um, and of course, work with the board members to ensure that we have a, a, an exact warrant that meets the needs of the students um, in, being, in working with the budget smartly. Megan, anything else you wanna add? Any areas here that you'd wanna hit upon? Uh, no. Um, any questions here from board members or administration? No, I'm good. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So board action is we're looking to have a vote tonight to or not to move forward with the preparing and planning for a warrant article for the HTS renovation project. And as part of that, we want to um, uh, work with Trident to allocate funds not to exceed 25,000 to cover the cost of the associated uh, letters below. Uh, right now we have A through E. There are a few other areas that we'd be looking for their help. Uh, but this um, is what we're looking for them. In the past, I believe this is actually less than what we've um, worked with them on um, and funded them. So they're, they are reducing this and helping to do whatever they can uh, to you know move forward with this project. Uh, Gino you know, from Trident has met with Megan and I a number of times. Um, he is looking to provide some more input to us of how um, other towns have uh, got approved recently, um, just uh, over across of 93 in uh, Pelham, how they've done it and how they've done their SAU administration building um, with not a lot of that additional cost as well, but just how they were successful in teaming us up with some of the school board members and community members uh, from, from Pelham is part of that plan. So, mic drop, that's where we're at. Questions, comments? Uh, I don't have any questions. I appreciate you guys putting this together and, and really working on a timeline here, which is um, certainly something that I think is important and will keep us on track. And I think it lets everybody know how we're going to do this and, and how we move forward. So um, to clarify, I think we're looking for a motion to um, allocate the funds for Trident. Um, I don't know that you need to vote to like separately to go, kind of go forward with preparing. Um, as you noted in your timeline, we'll vote further in the year um, on the actual plan that would go on the warrant. Um, that was my only comment, I think. I don't know if anybody else has comments or questions. Okay. Um, oh, hold on, hold on. Hearing, oh, oh sorry, sorry, Jim, I can't. You're Can not you currently showing on my little slice of screen. Oh, sorry. 
My bad. David, could you go back a screen? All right, I'm going to get all your pictures out of there. I, what, I was just looking at that December date, board to vote on warrant. I mean, I'm not, I've always and always will be for construction at the school. I'm not sure it's the right time, but I don't have the plan in front of me. I, I, I don't think I, at this point, want to chop anybody off at the knees. Um, not that that's what I'll do later. Um, I just, um, I think, um, like I said, I, we all have been for this plan. And um, I think I will vote for this to go forward. Um, I, I don't know if it's the right time, but I guess we'll have an opportunity to talk about that more with the costs um, and you know, the prospects of getting money from the state. Um, and then I guess we could make our final decision later. So, you know, I, I don't think this is tons of money to spend to figure that out. So anyways, um, you can go, go ahead, Caitlin. No, that was good. Jim. Thank you. Hey, Caitlin. Yep. I can't tell if I'm muted or not. No, I'm no, not. I can hear you. Okay. Um, yeah, I have some concerns uh, that Jim also mentioned. Um, I have concerns about the timing of this this year uh, for obvious reasons um, and, and not, not just the timing but I don't know the plan itself I've been very supportive of this over the last six years that I've been on the board and looking back on it um, this plan's really been floating around in different versions you know first it was the bread loaf plan and then we switched and everything for about 15 years one of my concerns is that when, when we started this, the entire focus was on Central School. And those needs are still there. I'm not saying that they're not. But we have always gone to the town and said, middle school is fine. Don't worry. We'll, we'll pass this for Central School and middle school is going to be fine. But over 15 years, it, that's changed. <laughs> I think there are issues and concerns at middle school that have been let go uh, and not addressed over the last 15 years because the thought's always been, well, we wanna focus on central school, we have to get this to pass. Um, and as much as I hope that this passes, I, I think that for me, it's obvious the reasons are obvious this year that this is year is going to be a real challenge and a real struggle to get 60%, even more so than it has in the previous years. So I'm not saying I'm not going to vote for this tonight to go forward, but I want you to know what I'm thinking because it'll come up later at some point, I think. Um, I think that we need to, I think we need to focus on both schools um, to improve the environment at both schools, focus on what can be done to support the students and staff at both schools at this point. With COVID, the idea of air quality comes to mind. We've done a lot of talking about that. And just maybe we need to clean up some of the air quality situations at middle school that have been hanging around now for years. Um, you know, a couple that come to mind is, you know, to maybe we, we should finish and remove and replace the, the drop ceiling in the cafeteria so that we can clean out the debris and whatever living things might be up there between the ceiling and the insulation. You know, put new tiles in, put new waterproof tiles in. Uh, all that stuff contributes to a better air quality in the cafeteria. Um, we've done a great job over there over the years removing the asbestos from middle school. 
why not finish that job? Why not finish removing the asbestos that's in the library? I mean, that's a big space. The library is like three classrooms. I think the asbestos should be removed from there. And, and maybe looking at some of the AC in, in, in the classrooms, if you want to talk about air quality. And then both schools have unfinished business with, with the roofs. Both schools, I, th I think, still have rocks, rock roofs on. I mean, that's unheard of today. It was a roof that we started and never finished. We never did it properly to seal it properly. Um, I guess what I would, for now, if I had to make a decision tonight, I would say that we use the, the $365,000 that we have and put it towards finishing some of these projects that we, we started years ago um, to the benefit of both schools. Because I don't think we can honestly say to the public this year, you know, we want 9 million, 10 million, 8 million, whatever the final number is going to be, only for central school. Because I'm aware that these issues need to be addressed at the middle school. Um, that's all I'm saying. I said, I think, yeah, look at the bigger picture this year. And I agree things need to be done in the 60s wing. I, for one, don't even know why we let our kids go to the school in the 60s wing, in the undersized classrooms with, no ventil with poor ventilation, poor insulation. It makes no sense. But that's what's happened. I mean, for me, if we could do something with the ventilation and the insulation in the 60s wing and still take care of the air quality issues that exist in middle school, I think that that would be accomplishing something this year and some things that we could do with the money we already have. Um, so anyway, I just want you to know that's my thoughts on it for this year. Um, so if I could just, yeah, uh, thanks, Karen. I would ask that um, maybe at the next meeting we have Mr. Mackey come back because the last time we talked to, to Mr. Mackey about this, and we talked about this last, I want to say November, we had brought up the concerns about the middle school and he had laid out a plan to get after a number of things at the middle school without having to go for a warrant for the middle school. I don't know if that still holds true. I don't know if maybe you've talked to Mr. Mackey since then uh, or recently about what any thoughts he's had on his, I think he had a five year plan on uh, doing a number of uh, the items that you had spoken about or if those were part of it. Uh, but I don't see as those as, as of right now as the same as um, what's needed at the central school or at least at the, the priority of the central school. What I heard was a lot of items that, you know, Mr. Mackey's talked about and laying out, you know, again, a five year plan for doing, let's say, continue to modernize or continue to update uh, the middle school. Uh, but if we find that through maybe next meeting or whenever we want to have uh, Mr. Mackey, that we think that there's anything that has to be part of this, we certainly can. We have enough time to hold any of that in. If we think we need to either add to it or I'd say advance, fast forward some of those um, modifications that you're talking about, Karen. Okay. I think that's a good point. I mean, um, trying to think about the best uh, timing for kind of an update on that. I mean, we did hear two years ago that all of the HVAC at middle school is an issue. Um, when we had the issue with smells um, right before school started. Um, now that was before Mr. Mackey came on, so that was a, a different um, discussion that we were having at that point. Um, this may be a good thing to fold into our budget workshop on the 6th. The, the the middle school pieces to kind of have some numbers there and I'm and I'm sure um, administration and and Mr. Mackey will be working on items they're going to bring forward for the budget anyway. So the the middle school aspect that might be a good time to have those discussions as well as um, if it was to be folded in or or considered um, for any sort of warrant put forward. That's what I'm thinking. I guess I don't know if Jeff's still on the call. It'd be interesting for him to send out his five-year plan that he had laid out 
year over year, both HMS and HCS, that was outside of any warrant. Yeah, we can um, take that out, take a look at it, and uh, make sure it's still current, and um, you know, send that out. Thanks, Thanks Jeff. Thank you. Well, Any other comments or questions? Or anything, Megan or David, you want to bring forward on this? Okay. Um, I'm going to word a motion, and somebody can tell me if I do it wrong. I would say the motion would be um, motion to allocate funds not to exceed $25,000 for renovation preparation work with Trident at all. There's other ones in there. Um, is that right? Somebody who's a professional. <laughs> oh, did I motion it? Sure. Somebody tell me, by the way, like if I just did that wrong, if I just made the motion incorrectly, I just want to make sure that the motion's fine before we actually pull a vote on it. Okay, I think I motioned it. I think David seconded it. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing, hearing none. Melissa, will you please call the roll vote? Ms. Malcolm? Yes. Mrs. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? You're muted, Jim. Yes. Mrs. Yasenka? This is just for $25,000 to go forward on the project. To work with Trident for planning and support mm -hmm. and plans. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'm gonna vote no. Okay. okay. The motion still carries four to one. Okay, thank you. All right, next up, uh, board comments and correspondence. I'm going to go in order that I see people. Uh, that means I'm first. I don't have anything right now. Uh, David, do you have anything for comments and correspondence? Um, I don't know if we want to address it, but I, I just, uh, I know that we got an email from a couple parents that had uh, put a survey out there uh, that they received a lot of uh, feedback. I just want to say, uh, if we're not going to go into it, at least say I appreciate um, parents in the community um, just looking for input from fellow parents and providing that uh, information to us, the school board. Yep. Um, Jim. Um, I don't have much. I just wanted to say thank you to the middle school um, teachers and staff for their presentation this afternoon, uh, specifically for the fifth grade. Um, it was, it was uh, very well put together, a lot of information. Um, and I want to say thank you to everybody for all the information that's been coming out, out from both schools and from the SAU staff. Um, been a lot of information coming out, keeping everybody up to date. Um, so I'm pretty excited about Mike's new tool that they're going to be using for sign-ons um, when I heard about that because I know for the first three months trying to figure out who, what password was what to get into what program I'm pretty excited about the news that Jeff uh, that um, Mike Flynn gave us earlier about Clever so I'm just looking forward to um, the parade um, it's always a good time for the kids to see the teachers and the teachers to see the kids decorate the cars. Um, and then uh, first day of school in remote. That's it. Okay, 
Thanks, Jim. Uh, Megan, anything um, today? Yeah, so I guess, like Jim, I attended the fifth grade open house, and um, earlier Mrs. Janella talked about the energy, and it really was very, very positive. You could see all the teachers were, I mean, they're smiling faces, they're excited, they got to see the kids. Um, so it's very thoughtful, and I just appreciate the experience. Um, I know it's hard, but um, what the teachers are doing for our kids really is, it's special. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Uh, Karen. Nope. Just uh, thank you to everybody, the administrators, the staff that have worked so hard to um, make the remote learning the best it possibly can at this time. Thank you, everyone. Well said. Thank you, Karen. Okay, next up is um, consent agenda. Hey, thanks, Karen. Dr. Um, Metzler. Thank you. Uh, we uh, do not have a personnel report tonight. Um, you know, my report was pretty much embedded in the, the other reports with the opening of school. So um, I don't know if you have the financial documents, but that's pretty much it for the consent agenda. Okay, then we don't have to vote, I don't think. Um, I don't have anything for other business or old business unless um, any board members have anything to bring forward under that. Nope, okay. Seeing none, um, I am going to ask for a non-public. Um, looking to for a motion to go in under 91A, colon three, paragraph two, C, um, reputation and L, legal. I need a motion. Move. I think I heard Mr. Sweeney and Mrs. Yasenka. Thank you. And we'll count that as a second. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Melissa, if you will please call the roll. Yes. Ms. Malcolm? Yes. Mrs. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. Mrs. Yusenka? Yes. Okay, motion carries. It's 9.38 p.m.